Now our Walmart starting lineup for tonight's Chevy Monte Carlo 400. Jeff Gordon on the pole at Richmond for the fourth time with Rusty Wallace, a six-time winner here alongside. Row two, it's Sterling Marlin equaling his best ever Richmond start and Jeff Burton, the 98th winner of this race. Row three, Ward Burton and Bobby Labonte. Ward, last week's winner, one of the million dollar eligible drivers. Labonte is two, they'll come from row three. It's Casey Atwood and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in row four. Earnhardt Jr. won last season here in the spring race. Inside of row five, Ricky Rudd from nearby Chesapeake. Ron Arday from California on the outside. Inside of row six, Joe Nemechek from down in Florida. Todd Bonine from New York on the outside. In row seven, Stacy Compton, another Virginia boy, and Dave Blaney. In row eight, Ricky Craven and Dale Jarrett. In row nine, the 36 car, Kenny Schrader, and Jeff Green, the fastest car in happy hour. Row 10, Mark Martin on the inside, John Andretti on the outside. Couple of Richard Childress racing entries in row 11, Mike Skinner and Kevin Harvick. Harvick finished 17th here in May in his first Winston Cup try. Row 12, Bobby Hamilton and Robert Presley. Remember Presley with that hard crash last week. He says he's good to go tonight. Row 13, Jimmy Spencer and Terry Labonte. Spencer won the Bush race last night. Labonte a three-time Winston Cup winner here. Johnny Benson and Kenny Wallace go in row 14. Wallace subbing for Steve Park, who's out for at least the next four to six weeks with injury. Mike Wallace and Jeremy Mayfield in row 15. 16th row, Buckshaw Jones and Elliot Sadler. Elliot quick and happy hour. He's one of the million dollar eligible drivers. Tony Stewart, gonna be in row 17. A lot of folks think he's gonna be at the front by the time we get to the lap 100 mark. Red boat out on the inside of 18. Kyle Petty on the outside of that row. 19, Bill Elliott and Matt Kenseth. Elliott almost crashed in qualifying. Puts him back in provisional land. In row 20 on the inside, Jerry Nadu, Kurt Busch on the outside, who did crash in practice. In row 21 on the inside, Michael Waltrip, Jason Leffler, and the backup car on the outside. And starting 43rd will be Kevin LePage. Drivers who failed to qualify for tonight's race. Hermie Sadler had a local Richmond-based sponsor, the Virginia State Lottery it was, in fact. Big pressure on him, wasn't able to get it in the show. Andy Houston, Hutch Strickland driving for a hometown team owner. Not able to be in the race tonight. Storylines will follow through our coverage of the race. What kind of short track wildness are we going to have tonight? And I, you're right, 400 laps of bumping and banging. We'll see that tonight. Staying on the lead lap. We usually get one stretch in this race where they go under the green flag a lot, and you got to be on the lead lap to have a chance at a good finish. Yeah, you don't want to go a lap down early here. That's going to really hurt the chances, and pit stops are really, really important, too. Five drivers, five fans eligible for a million dollars if one of those five drivers can win the race. Set to go. 100,000 on their feet at Richmond, and we're racing in the Chevy Monte Carlo 400. Jeff Gordon leads lap one. Here's Sterling Marlin challenging Rusty Wallace for second. And to no one's surprise, that low groove is working the best right now. We will see this groove, the fastest point of the racetrack, move up in the corners as the night progresses. Marlin second, Wallace third, Jeff Burton fourth, Ward Burton fifth, Casey Atwood takes sixth from Bobby Labonte, and we reach lap three. Jeff Gordon is loving this as these guys battle for position. He's just driving away from it. Behind Wallace and Marlin, the Burton brothers have exchanged the spot. Ward has gotten by Jeff to take fourth. Jeff is fifth. Casey Atwood and Ron Hornaday racing for sixth, but still second place is the hot spot. 
<laughs> they keep trading the inside and outside. One lap, Rush is on the bottom. The next lap, he's on the outside groove. And I'm surprised, you know, we, we saw the Bush race start out like this, but then the, the high line got really good, and I'm surprised it's taken this long for the cup race as well. John Andretti's got a problem up in turn four. He's off the pace. I think the left front tire is flat on that car. Sure looks like it. Andretti falling back. Couldn't get the pit road first time by. It happened too quickly. And we saw some of that last night in the Bush race as well. Left front is definitely down. Uh-oh. If that tire ends up in the groove something, and the, it did. Now, the question is, if he had contact with somebody to cut that tire down. Let's find out. Jimmy Spencer on the inside and John Andretti and there it is right there. Well I don't know it may have went down at that time. Car looks clean. Spencer was clearly up inside of the road going into the corner and had position. So under caution early here at Richmond just seven laps in. At the Richmond International Raceway NASCAR on TNT bringing you the Chevrolet Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. An early caution, just seven laps in. John Andretti with a left front tire that went flat after contact with Jimmy Spencer. And the casing from the tire came to rest in the in the line in turn three. Necessitating a caution. Dave Burns. Alan, this is what came off the left front of John Andretti and the Goodyear guys just told me there's not enough here for us to determine what exactly happened with that tire. It's gone. Well, if you look on the door of the 43 on the left side, he's got a tire mark there. So he more than likely cut that tire. Whatever contact he had with whoever probably put that tire down. A couple guys toward the back end of the field have made pit stops under the caution. Michael Waltrip, Matt Kenseth, and Rick Mast have been in, all taking on tires. You see that tire mark there. And we still work the caution flag here. We run enough laps, Wally, for these guys to get a really good feel. Well, we'll get back to that in a minute. Why don't we take advantage of the caution to get another commercial in? Back for the restart in a minute on TNT. Back at Richmond, pace car hits pit road, and ready? we're set to go back racing. Be ready, ready, and green, green, green. Ricky Rudd trying to get ninth from Bobby Labonte. Looks like that's going to happen as the exit turn two. Here's a challenge up front as Rudd completes that pass. Rusty Wallace taking a peek at Jeff Gordon. Bill Weber. Well, Alan, watch Rusty go, but the question is, can Rusty slow down? He says the brake pedal is very soft. He has a lot more movement in that pedal than he's used to or that he would like. Under caution, he said it would be okay, but it's a bit of a concern right now as he falls back into second place. How about Ron Hornaday, the 14 car? Started 10th in the Conseco car, just took four spot away from Ward Burton. And Hornaday already moving to the top of the racetrack. Well, maybe that's his advantage in the early going. There's a team that needs something good to happen for him tonight. 30th or worse in 12 of the last 15 races. This is on board the Conseco Pontiac. And I really fear for these bumper cameras. <laughs> The way he talks about these things, it's like he's carrying the note on him or something. <laughs> oh, battle for the lead. Rusty drives on the inside of Jeff Gordon. Behind them, Hornaday around Marlin for third as Wallace continues. Hello, to outside, the lead. outside. The Richmond Master to the front. Farther back, Dale Jr. trying to get a spot from Bobby Labonte. 
Bobby slipping back. So Junior is now in the ninth position. Remember that Dale Jr., one of the five drivers eligible for that million dollar bonus from the series sponsor Winston if he can win the race tonight. Michael Waltrip, Ward Burton, Elliott Sadler, and Bobby Labonte are the other drivers. You can note them easily on the racetrack by the bright orange rear spoilers on the backs of the cars. That's kind of the, the signifier for the fans in the stands here and folks watching on TV. Ricky Craven takes a spot away from Labonte. Puts him back to the 11th spot. Stacy Compton next up in line behind Bobby to try and take a position away. And Ricky Rudd working on Casey Atwood for seventh. Got him. Rudd's picked up a few spots here in the opening laps. Started in ninth, he's now seventh. But no one has picked up the spot. Ron Hornaday, well, may, well maybe Tony Stewart. Of course, he's only picked up about four. So I started to ask you when we were under the caution and we went to the commercial break so we could be back for the restart. Have we run enough la laps yet for these guys to have a feel for the track conditions? Remember, they practiced yesterday a couple of hours earlier in the day than they're getting to run now. Then we had the Bush Series race last night. How about it? Yeah, I think so. I, and I think you saw five or six cars come in and make that early pit stop to make adjustments. And they were really, really bad. Now, the rest of the guys are probably still saying, ah, I'm not quite sure yet. I need to get some more laps on my tires. I think Matt Kenseth stopped and changed it change the rear spring or a spring rubber in the right rear. Oh, and Jeremy Mayfield just about loses it off turn four. Big water card by him. He saves it. Tony Stewart gets by him. Kenny Wallace gets by him. But in the whole shuffle, it drops Mayfield back to the 30th position. Though he's still got a race car with all the fenders on it at this point. Jeremy running so well last week at Darlington, close to the finish. Then got into the wall in the final laps. And Rudd moving again. Battle for sixth position. And Ricky's car is working really good. Caution, front stretch, Buckshot Jones. Very Buckshot, but in gear go. Can't get it fired. Can't get it started. Second caution is out, just 28 laps into the race. Now, now I think you'll see some cars coming in. I, I think they've got a better handle on it. You'll see some pit stops. Well, we'll, we're going, wow. Got some raw fuel in that pipe there, BP. Yes, it does. As, it, as he was spinning around, <laughs> if it'll start, all that flame will go away. Finally, it did start. But one thing, had to start, is going to burn up. <laughs> yeah. Catch the grass on fire or something there. All right, let's see. Lead cars, just Jeff Burton is coming in. Jeff in sixth position. You'll see a lot of cars towards the back come in. Next one back is going to be Joe Nemechek in 19th, Mark Martin in 20th, and a lot of the cars from them on back. So of the top 20, only one coming into pit. Marty? Yeah, Jeff Burton, and uh, he was just complaining that the car was tight. They're obviously going to give up a lot of track position here, but they think they are much better on the longer runs, and they think that's going to be the key tonight. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. Tony Stewart said he needed a little help in the center of the corner, so they made a track bar adjustment. They also went down one pound on each rear tire. Stewart's out of here. Dale Jarrett in. Go, 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 go. So 19 of the top 20 stay on the track. Only sixth place Jeff Burton comes in, and then those in the back half of the field. Different tire strategy schedules already. We'll see how that plays out when we come back. Back at 
Richmond as the green flag waves and we're underway once again. Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, and Ron Hornaday, the top three. And yeah. check Hornaday out. He likes this running up front, doesn't he? I'm telling you what, that car's working good up there for him. Second place. Go around the outside of Jeff Gordon. That's not exactly easy to do. All right, Rusty, look in your, in your rear view mirror. Your biggest nightmare is there. Ron Hornaday. <laughs> I'm not sure Rusty's going to make it that easy for him as uh, maybe the 24 did. As a matter of fact, Jeff Gordon about to lose another spot to Sterling Marlin in the 40 car. Farthest forward any of the drivers who pitted under the car. Oh, oh, contact. Oh. Gordon's in the wall. Right. The championship leader in the wall early at Richmond. What a big moment that is. Wow. Boy. Lap 35 at Richmond. The point leader's in the wall. Racing for third with Sterling Marlin. Like garage, bro. Down here, we'll come to that opening. Is. Jump on the last opening there. Heavy damage. Look at that. Plenty of room. Okay, guys, just remember our drills. Let's get it fixed and get all we can out of this thing. You hear Jeff said that I gave him plenty of room. He was referring to giving Sterling a lot right of room when he went down in the corner. So let's stay here with all, all right. the safety equipment. Find out. We might need to move first. Let's go take a look at what happened. That's a 40 car. Sterling Marlin to go in the corner. And right there, just as he entered the corner. We talked about it last night. It doesn't take much. You're in turn all the time here. If you just touch somebody, he's going around. Yeah, Marlon. The relationship between Marlon's left side tires and that yellow line at the bottom of the racetrack is what you judge by. Right. Sterling's up off the bottom. There was a lot of room down at the bottom of the racetrack for sure. And I'll tell you another thing happens. I'm not saying it happened this time. Just watch here. When you're racing a guy getting down in these corners, you drive in a little bit harder than you normally would. And when you get in there and you get hard on the brakes, the car will push up the racetrack a little bit. I'm not saying that's what's happened, but it does happen here a lot. Dave Burns. Let me illuminate you just a little bit right before, just when we went back to green, Sterling was reporting in on his radio that he had what he called a late push. In other words, he would drive in hard, and then late in the turn through the corner, the car would push on him. He also radioed in after the incident. He said he just slowed down a little bit, and I got up into him. So, caution out, third time already and just 37 laps in this race, and it's the championship leader who's behind the wall with heavy damage. This is Jeff Gordon's car looking live as he goes up behind the wall back toward the garage area. <laughs> Trying to make his way into where the team's heavy duty equipment is to see what kind of repairs they can affect on that Chevrolet. And look at that crash cart in front of him. With all the equipment they need to repair this DuPont Chevy. And they're gonna need a lot. Asking him where to take it. They'll take it over by the transporter and go to work. We'll follow that story for you, but we're back racing on the track. Rusty Wallace leads Ron Hornaday, Sterling Marlin, now Ward Burton up to fourth, and Ricky Rudd fifth. Buckshot Jones down on the inside is a lap down. Back in 41st place from his spin earlier. 14 car looks good. He's looking on the inside of Rusty Wallace. He's looking there. Oh. <laughs> Try 
And again, down low. He's determined to get out front. Rusty Wallace took his line away from him. Rusty Wallace moved up on the racetrack exactly the same spot that Hornaday has been running. Here's Ricky Rudd trying to get another spot. This is fourth place. He's been on from Ward Burton and Dale Jr. trying to follow him through. Dale Jr. started in eighth. Junior up to six now around Casey Atwood. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. Well, Jeff Gordon is surveying the damage. Jeff, something you normally see at the end of a short track race, not so early. Yeah, um, you know, I'm not sure what happened. I have to ask uh, Sterling, but um, you know, I was just my, and my car did take a little while to come in. It was really, really good. I tell you, I'm real happy with the way the car was working, and um, it just took a while. And so I, uh, Sterling was faster. He got to the inside. I gave him the inside. I'm just working outside, waiting for my tires to come in. I know we touched going in three, and that was it. How bad is the car hurt? Will you be able to get it back out for points? Oh, you know we'll get it back out there, but uh, it's not going to be much of a points day today. I keep telling you guys, man, it ain't over yet. Well, he came in with a 342-point lead, but that will take a hit today, Alan. Now the pressure being on Rudd, Marlin, and Jarrett to try and have a good finish, if not win, and gain the most points they can, taking advantage of Gordon's troubles. They're sitting up in that CBP a little bit taller, knowing that points leader is in that garage and that they can make up a lot of ground tonight. That is right. They're on that accelerator just a little bit harder. Kenny Schrader on the outside, the 36 car. Schrader started back in 17th, is up to the eighth position. Last three or four races, Schrader has been a dominant car. I talked with New Morris crew chief this morning and he said they found something in their shock package that Kenny really likes. He thought they'd run well tonight. Talking about Ricky Rudd and championship, we talked with Ricky earlier this weekend about what he and the 28 have to do to get back in the fight for this title. He has those same couple of races in a row, mechanical problems that I had. But then all of a sudden, well, again, we're right back in the thick of things. So we still have like 10, 11 races to go. And he's going to have some problems. Hopefully we won't, but realistically we're going to have problems. But you know, it's not impossible for us to win this thing. But mathematically, I think it's impossible if we both finish the season without any mechanical problems whatsoever. Then the championship's already settled. But you know, our only hope is that, that he has some problems and we don't. Well, there's some hope. <laughs> That's what he got. Rudd working hard on trying to get that fourth position away from Ward Burton. Which has been about seven laps now. And the problem, the problem with it is, is you know, with Ricky down on the bottom of the racetrack, where he needs to be is he needs to let the car drift up right there. And when the 22 car is there, that's when you lose a little bit of track position. Now the 28 will gain a little bit getting into the corner here, but it's getting off the corner. When you got to pinch the car down, it makes it tough to make that pass. Dave Burns. And Alan, earlier they were talking on the radio, the 28 guys were about running the high line, but the 14 car, Ron Hornaday, was running and ran last night in the Bush Series race when he finished 11th. And um, so it appears that now if Ricky can make the pass, which he did, that he can get back up in that high line and run where he was quicker. Looking down on Richmond International Raceway from the U.S. Army Sky Cam. United States Army, the Army of One. Now, just a second ago when we had that shot, the 22 car War Burton actually pointed out the window to Dale Jr. that, hey, if you're going to get me, I want you to go down low. As we watch this battle for the fourth position, Rusty Wallace has pulled away from Hornaday by about a second. So the lead is settled down. Wallace, Hornaday, and Marlin. Then we go back to this race for fourth on down. He did. He obliged. Ward told him to go low. It's one of the outside. It's 
one of the great things about this track. The two lanes are equally as fast. You can race side by side all night long. But the problem is being down low, if you're down there lap after lap, you're actually abusing your tires more than the guy on the outside. You heat the tires up more because you're pinching the car down. So you're putting more heat in the right front tire. Well, Ward defends for now. Hangs on to the fifth position over Dale Earnhardt Jr., but it's Rusty Wallace who's out in front here at Richmond. What's up, Jeff? Hey, yeah, give me old one, two. Give me old uh, one, four. Surely they know this means war. Drivers carrying the Looney Tunes characters tonight. And where they stand in the race, 9th, 11th, 17th, 20th, and in the garage. Bugs Bunny ran to his home on the 24 car. He is in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> so Gordon right now behind the wall getting repairs made to his car after a lap 35 crash that you saw with Sterling Marlin. This while Ricky Rudd runs fourth. Marlin runs second. And Dale Jarrett runs 27th. And you can see Rusty Wallace, the leader of the two car. Sterling Marlin of 40 has taken the second spot away from Ron Hornaday. Interval 1.38 seconds from Wallace back to Marlin. And Hornaday has fallen another second farther behind them. As you look down on the gap, there it is. There's Hornaday. Rusty Wallace, the unquestioned master of this Richmond track since it was rebuilt in its three-quarter mile form. He has just been outstanding and dominating here. He leads every statistical category at this racetrack since it was done in the three-quarter mile layover. Most wins, most top fives, most top tens, most races led, most laps led. Do you know, Benny, that since they redid this racetrack in its current form. Rusty Wallace has led 24% of every lap raced here. 24% of every, of every lap. All the laps yeah, have been run that have been run really? since the track was made into this, this shape. Well, he's definitely the dominant car. We see Rusty Wallace uh, pulling away from Sterling Marlin about a second and a half in front now. Kevin Harvick, Ken Schrader, Bobby Labonte. This is for 10th, 11th, and 12th. in the uh, 11th position, Dave Burns. Yeah, he's moving back just a little bit, Alan. Uh, I checked with his pit, and they said he was okay, and right about that time, he radioed in and said that he was a little tight, and so they're going to try to make some changes when they pit the first time. All right, so that's the update on Ken Schrader. I started to talk a minute ago about the conversation I had with his crew chief, Newt Moore, earlier today down in the garage. He said a couple of weeks ago, they hit on something. They hired a new shock specialist, and they hit on this combination that Ken really likes the feel of, and it's reflected in their racing the last couple of weeks. Well, it makes a big difference. I mean, the shock package gives you a lot of feel in the racetrack, and what you're looking for, what driver's looking for when you look for the feel is grip. So if that's helped Kenny, that's going to give him a lot of confidence. This is ninth place. And we see Harvick has taken that spot away from Jeff Green. That is Jeff Green, the AOL car, the 30. And in happy hour, he was just clearly faster than all the other cars, talking about Jeff Green. Now, here's the first of the cars that pitted under that last caution, moving back through the field. The 99 of Jeff Burton. He restarted in 25th place. He's trying to take 14th from Ricky Craven. And Tony Stewart, the 20 car, is following Jeff Burton. He also made a pit stop, a chassis adjustment, and four tires. 
So we're at lap 72 now. These guys, 73 make it. These guys who have not stopped up the front. If this is a long green flag run, how far can they go? I don't know. Be honest with you, Alan. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. How about... Uh -oh, here comes the math. Here comes the math. <laughs> <laughs> How about about lap 110? Okay. Is what uh, most of the people were telling me would be the farthest they'd want to run. Maybe not pinning under that caution could turn into a mistake if this goes green for a while. Well, I agree with you, especially if some of these guys take two tires. Even though that they may have to be forced to take two tires. Battle for third position. One day after that fast run to begin with has fallen back. Ricky Rudd trying to take that away. Hornaday was battling for the lead just a few laps ago, and now he's battling for fourth. Matt Yoakum. About 10 laps ago, Alan, Ron Hornaday came on the radio and was talking to his crew chief, Donnie Bradis, that the car has become tight entering the corner, so he was playing with a great bias, trying to free it up a little bit, but his biggest concern is how compared to the competition. So his spotter, Skip Eiler, was eyeing Hornaday's rotors. He said they were glowing, but not any worse than the 40 car. You know, another problem you've got to be careful here is not running your brakes too hard at the start of the race. Because what happens is you'll glaze the brakes over. And what that is, you get the brakes so hot right off the bat, it actually leaves a film over the rotor. And it it hurts the breaking of that and that never comes back so you got to be i think that happened to jimmy spencer earlier this year at the first race here exactly the same thing what happens is the brake pads get so hot that the the material sticks to the rotor right, right. and then all of a sudden it, they just won't stop you hit the brakes you've got a good pedal but the car will not slow down the way it has been slowing down burton and stewart continuing to march through the field on the pressure tires taking 13th away from johnny benson Marty. Well, I'd say the uh, pit stop earlier has really paid off for Jeff Burton, guys. As we've mentioned, he restarted 25th. He is now up to the 13th position. He was a little bit loose and a little bit tight on that last run. They came in, they fixed that. Now he's just a little bit loose off. And the scary part is his car is just now starting to come in. They are terrible on new tires, but absolutely terrific on these old tires. And that's where you want to be terrific. You want to be terrific longer down in the run. That's going to make a big difference towards the end of the race. Now working on Ken Schrader for 12th. You see Bobby Labonte just in front of them. He's the 11th place driver. And we're 80 laps in. Rusty Wallace, the leader, has caught the tail end of the field. Left traffic ahead here in Richmond. Log on now to NASCAR.com and check out the Conseco NASCAR Fantasy Challenge. Pick your own team of drivers and see how you match up against other fantasy teams. Log in today and you might just win a replica of the number 14 Conseco Winston Cup Pontiac. That replica would be running in fifth place right now. Ron Hornaday having a solid night. There's your leader, Rusty Wallace. And there's your second place car. Sterling Marlin has caught Rusty Wallace. I don't know if Sterling right now is a little bit faster or Rusty in trying to work his Three way through. Up. Lap traffic has slowed Rusty down. He's been in some very heavy traffic here these last couple of laps around. He's put Buckshot Jones another lap down. Mike Wallace, Jason Leffler. And would you believe Mark Martin is a lap down 88 laps in at Richmond. Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the move. And Hornaday is about to lose another spot. So Junior to fifth, Hornaday back to sixth. And the guy that we haven't talked about that's now in fourth spot is Jimmy Spencer. And he's duplicating his great run in May with another great run here tonight. Can't forget about Jimmy because Jimmy never forgets. Bill? Very good, Alan. You know, Spencer's had great runs the last two weeks, too. In fact, Liz talked about it on a pre-race show. At Bristol, had a good run going, broke a motor, had a good run going at Darlington, 
blew up, had a good run here last night and won. Spencer's in a car that has two top ten finishes already this year. I heard something very funny on the radio a few minutes ago. They said, Jimmy, just be patient and you'll get to the front. That's a new strategy for Spencer. <laughs> never work, Bill. That will never work with Jimmy Spencer. Scoring serial on Jimmy, steadily picked his way to the front. And you saw the lead change while Bill was giving us his report on Spencer. Sterling Marlin has overtaken Rusty Wallace and gone to the point. Third different driver to lead. Jeremy Mayfield going a lap down. Is that, is that some smoke from Brett Bodine's car? Yes, and we see the Ford car has made some contact with the outside retaining wall. Caution. Caution's out. Now watch Michael and all these guys race back to the line. Yeah, Sterling didn't give anybody anything. That's how he's supposed to do it, according to you guys, right? According to me. Yeah, I agree with MVP. that. You go I, for that? I go for that. Got to pick that thing up, boys. The wheel comes off easier. Uh, he's hit it pretty good, whatever it is. Uh, that caused it. Let's take a look. On the very right side of the screen, right front tire goes flat just as he comes off the corner. You're right, BP. You can see the car drop down on the right front, right at that point. Leaders are on pit road under the caution flag. Matt. Todd Hunterdick complaining about his car was tight and getting tighter. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment in the left rear tire on this four tire stop to Bill. Four tires for Rusty Wallace down a pound on all tires except the right front. Joe Nemechek has a problem right next to him. Rusty's getting his tires. He's on his way to Dane. The leader is in. Four tires problems now on the on the left rear. He shoves it in reverse so he can get around. And now they got big problems. Back it up and put it in gear, Sterling said. And now they're trying to figure out what is wrong with the car. He may have broken it when it came down, letting the letting the uh, clutch out and going for the gas. But they're still trying to figure it out. He wanted no adjustments. The car was perfect, he said. And unfortunately, now he's going to need a big adjustment. Man, throw a jacks down under that car. Well, I was just thinking the same thing, BP. There, there you, you go. go. Thank you. Transmission stuck when he put it in reverse. Well, he's got it reversed and he can't get it out of. It will not. The shifter is jammed and he cannot get it out of reverse. Is what I'm assuming has happened. Oh man! You know, one thing I noticed on the 14 car, when they pulled them front tires off, there's a lot of brake dust that came out of there, BP. So that could be a little bit of problem of why that 14 is so tight. And it could be the what happened to the four car. Because these brakes on these cars get so hot that they will actually melt the bead where the tire mounts on the rim. That's the closest point to the brake rotor. It will melt that tire and the right and the tire will go flat. Ricky Rudd wins the race off pit road followed by Rusty Wallace. Then Dale Earnhardt Jr. is out third. Jimmy Spencer fourth. Kevin Harvick then Ward Burton Ron Hornaday Jeff Burton Jeff Green and Tony Stewart. And all those guys that were leaders saved by the caution flag. They were going to have to make a pit stop under green. Tony Glover, the guy in the white shirt there, the team manager, cannot believe what happened to him. Now that's the guy in first in points, second in points, correct? Third. Is Sterling a second, third points? Rock. Sterling's third. They've had trouble tonight. Happy days for Ricky Rudd. Yeah. <laughs> Although he may be sweating bullets right now. Yeah. He may think he's next. You weren't superstitious like that, were you? Oh, no. Yeah. Wow. What's the wow about? A lot of sideways starts there, like they had cold tires or, or there were dirt on the tires. 12 car got sideways, two car got sideways. All the guys are lapped down trying to get one back from the leaders, but it's not going to work because Ricky Rudd is gone. All 
All right, let's get some updates from Pit Road now that we're back racing. Marty? Yeah, Dale Earnhardt Jr. on that last run, guys, a little bit tight in the center. They took half a pound out of the right front tire. The car is outstanding, and they have a million reasons to want to win tonight. They look very strong. Dale Jr. running in third. Started the race in the eighth position. Talked to him at the driver's meeting tonight, said, how's your car? He said, man, eh, it's okay. He looks pretty darn good right now, doesn't it? Rusty Wallace, we can see two-thirds of a second behind the leader. He's getting a strong challenge from Dale Jr. And we see Rusty losing distance to Ricky Rudd. Looking at our Williams race chase. You can see that these guys are just losing ever so slightly to Ricky Rudd. Bill Earnhardt Jr., great corner up in three and four. Here he comes. While we watch this race for second place, let's hear from Sterling Marlin, who was leading until they came down pit road a minute ago, Dave. That's right, and he put the car in gear that only had reverse. Is it all transmission related, Sterling? Yeah, I think it is. We, uh, I got in a little too hot on the pit and got a little too far forward, and, and uh, Schrader stopped short, blocked me in, and put it in burst back up, like we've done 100 times before, and it tripped something. So uh, we hate it. Coors Light car is really fast and had a good car. He had a really good car. He's had a good car for the past few weeks, guys. He's moved from six to third in points, and in that time, he completed every lap, all 2,046. Mike Wallace got some problems. He's shaking the car back and forth to see if everything's in one piece there. Or? Yeah, he, he, he may have thought he's got a tire going down, so he's probably turning the wheel back and forth to see if, uh, see if they're all up on air. Mike back in 35th place, one lap down to the race leader. Got overtaken just before that last caution came out. <laughs> Battle still rages between Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt Jr. And, and like I said earlier, you know, getting in the corner, I think it's the preferred line is being on the bottom. But getting off the corner, you want to be up high. So that's why you see you want to have a little bit of advantage right now getting in. And Rusty will pull back up, getting up off the corner. Tight. Oh, tight. And Junior's making this pass one foot at a time. He finally clears Rusty Wallace. So Dale Junior to second, Rusty Wallace back to third. They're behind leader Ricky Rudd. But well, the fifth different we'll driver to spend time out in front of the Chevy Monte Carlo 400. We are under caution at Richmond. Elliot Sadler's got some problems. And that's not the reason for the caution flag. His earlier spin is a reason for the caution flag. He's trying to keep up with the field with a flat right rear tire. Here's the earlier one. Ouch. And I, I'm not too sure that the right rear tire wasn't flat no, that caused that spin. I don't think so, BP. I, I watched that right rear tire, and it was up until he hit the wall. So he got the first one. Now he's trying to keep up with the field and come back around to the caution flag. And it peels off the wheel. And when that steel wheel goes down and meets the racetrack, not a lot of traction there. The bright orange spoiler, that was one of the cars eligible for the million dollar bonus if he could win the race. The uh, fan who was paired with Elliott was Sharon Bauer of Peoria. Sharon, sorry. <laughs> She's still having a good time. <laughs> They're waving goodbye to that million dollars. Yeah, that's too bad. This team was so determined to try and make a good effort here tonight. They built a brand new car for the race. We're going to test it at a three quarter mile track in Lakeland, Florida. It was raining there, so instead they diverted to another three quarter mile track in Memphis, Tennessee. All just to try and get this thing ready to have a shot at that million dollars tonight. None of the leaders have pitted under this caution. A break here. Back for the restart in a minute on TNT. 
just gone back under the green flag here at Richmond. Ricky Rudd, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Rusty Wallace, Jimmy Spencer, Ward Burton. They are the top five. And a battle for the lead as Jr. looks on the inside of Ricky Rudd. Could not. Why have we got a spin? Mike Wallace right up through traffic. More scattering. Hornaday is spun. The rest of the field is stopped in the cloud of smoke. And when the smoke clears, how many will have been involved? Looks like just those two. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> All right, the seventh car, Mark Martin is right behind him. Come off the corner. And right there, some contact between Mark in the six and Mike Wallace in the seven. The seventh, Mike Wallace just nails the gas trying to get the car to do a 360. It did one, but just the nose hit the wall. See the 20 just barely get through. Watch Tony Stewart in this. Look at that. I mean, that's exactly what the drivers are seeing. Yeah, you're right. You cannot see a thing, and your spotter is trying to tell you which way to go, but he can't see any better than what you can see. Keep an eye on that orange 20. Well, you won't see him in the cloud of smoke either. Mike Wallace, he's coming right up on the wall. See him there? And Wallace goes right down and clears in front of him. And a deal like that, you're, you're as worried about getting hit than you are hitting somebody. On board to Mark Martin, you saw that great run he had and got in the back of Mike Wallace. Watch one today, he gets hit. Yep. Damage to the back, definitely. Somebody got into the back of him. Get a pit report on Dale Jarrett from Dave Burns. Yeah, Alan, he's been battling a loose condition, and they made another track fire adjustment and changed four tires under this caution. Remember, they were off sequence just a little bit with the rest of the guys uh, from before, but uh, DJ still not happy with the car. Well, running back in 28th spot, I'd say not. All right, that's right. I, I think right now anybody from sixth place on back is not happy with their car. Well, maybe because Jeff Burton is sixth. Matt Yoakum. Well, Benny, after that lap 35 incident with Jeff Gordon, which sent the 24 car back here to the garage, the Rainbow Warriors have worked on this point leading machine. He's getting ready to back his car out. Tony Gibson, the car chief, and Robbie Loomis and the guys have put on a new deck lid. They pulled away and cut away a lot of the damaged sheet metal. They braced up the fuel filler neck so that it won't bounce around and they can put fuel in the car to try to log laps, but Gordon just fired the car. He's putting his helmet and gloves on now. They are about three to five minutes away as Steve Peterson and Robbie Loomis are looking over that fuel filler neck. Loomis has braced that, but Peterson obviously is finding something wrong with that. They're discussing it right now, but Gordon is close to going back out. And Peterson's trying to do, he's just trying to make sure BP that this car is safe enough to return on the race track. If that car takes another hit, it's awfully vulnerable to, to have a fire or something wrong like that. So. And obviously, the, the Peterson has figured out that it's not safe enough because we heard Jeff Gordon turn the engine off. Back under green. And just to finish up on the Gordon thing, another thing that, that another issue that complicates items for a team trying to repair their car is this policy NASCAR took on what about a year ago that you get one chance to bring a, car, a damaged car back out of the garage and get it up to speed on the racetrack. If it's not up to speed when it comes back out the first time, you're done for the night. You don't get another chance. So before you bring that car out, you better make sure everything's strapped down tight and it's going to go. And I, and I think that's a good policy, you know, because guys are going to take a little bit more time getting it fixed and they would have just hurry up, and tape it up, bell and wire it up and send it out there and then be in the way or maybe even perhaps dangerous. 
Dale Earnhardt Jr. try to chase Ricky Rudd and fend off Rusty Wallace at the same time. Let's get a note from his pit from Marty. Yeah, so far no worries for Dale Earnhardt Jr. This is a brand new car called Step Daddy. Not Step Daddy, but Step Daddy. That's what they like to say. And it's painted red inside. Normally that would be gray. And that's in honor of Dale Jr.'s favorite Bush Series car called Stepchild and Stepmom. Those cars got 11 wins for Dale Earnhardt Jr., including three in a row here for DEI in the NASCAR Bush Series. Now they're hoping that the red inside the car fires them up and reminds them of days of old. So far, the car outstanding for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Junior right now settled into second spot, holding off Rusty Wallace, but losing a little bit of ground to Ricky Rudd as we look down on the Richmond International Raceway, courtesy of the United States Army Sky Cam. Be an Army of One, there are 212 ways to be a soldier. Find out more at GoArmy.com. Oh, Rusty really had a run at Junior there in the middle of the corner. I'm really impressed with Junior that watching the rotors on the eight car, he really doesn't seem to be using a lot of brakes to be able to run in the second spot. And, and really, if your car's working good here at Richmond, you shouldn't have to use a lot of brake. If the car gets in good and has a lot of grip, it'll roll through the center, you really use less brake. The guys that are using a lot of brake right now, their car's not handling very well because they're trying to use the brake to set the car. Ricky Rudd, Dale Jr., Rusty Wallace, Jimmy Spencer, Ward Burton. There are your top five here in Richmond. The Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes on TNT is brought to you by Team Monte Carlo. The cars more champions depend on. Chevy will be there. And by Budweiser with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. 133 laps in to the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. Ricky Rudd is the fifth different driver to be out in front of this one. Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Sterling Marlin, Brett Bodine for a lap during pit stops. And then Rudd have been the drivers who have paced it. Big stories in this one so far. Gordon getting tapped by Marlin at lap number 29. I should be at lap 35 while racing for third position. Gordon behind the wall getting repairs made to his car. And then Marlin on a pit stop at lap 94 from the lead, breaking the transmission on his car. And he's behind the wall. That's first and third in the championship. But we're in the garage right now. Bill Weber. Well, Alan, during the most recent caution period, all the teams were warned on the NASCAR frequency. It's 9.15, the penalty box is open. This is your only warning. We had NASCAR Director of Operations, Kevin Triplett, on the pre-race show, talking about the on-track incidents last night and the last couple of weeks in the Bush Series. But you have to be certain of one thing, NASCAR is watching the Winston Cup guys even more closely. They're more experienced, better drivers, better performance, and more patience is expected from them. Uh -huh, the penalty box door is open. What happens if someone makes contact with another car in front of them and, and NASCAR deems it to be irresponsible? They will bring that driver in that made the contact and he will sit for a couple laps. And the bottom line is that, that will be a judgment call on the NASCAR race control officials part. They make the call from here in the tower. Was that rough driving or was it incidental contact? Was it pass interference? Was it not? Same, same concept. Every yep. sport has got to have a referee. Right, let's check Rusty Wallace and see what kind of RPMs he's turning. The front straightaway is really where they use these engines up. Watch this, 70, 85, 6, 9,100 RPMs. It's probably three or 400 more RPMs than the backstretch. We saw 91. Let's see what we see in the back. 8,700 RPM. Exactly for one, and I did good. What kind of mile per hour down this front straightaway, the fastest part? part? 146 miles per hour before he slams on the brakes and turns left. 
told you all about Rusty's superlatives here at Richmond and how much he's dominated at this track. We talked with him about that earlier in this weekend, and he said one word here for him, confidence. When I go to Richmond, I feel like, hey, this is a track I'm going to win. And uh, when I go to the rest of the racetracks, I go there to win, but I'm thinking, man, there's a lot of hot rods, you know, we got a chance to win this track. But when I go to Richmond, I'm thinking, you know, I've won here six or seven times, and I'm probably one of the favorites to win here. And I go there with a lot better mental attitude when I go to Richmond. Hey, Rusty's car is tight. Real tight right now. Looks tight. Tight as a hair shirt. Are you, are you sure it's tight? What was that line? <laughs> Tighter than a hair shirt. <laughs> but Sterling Marlin has repaired the transmission on his car. That's a hair shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you think about that one. I thought about it. I don't like the middle <laughs> image. <laughs> Not getting up to speed very quick, is it? No, I... And here comes Jeff Gordon. Been in the garage since lap 35. We're at 143 now. Saw a new deck lead on the DuPont Chevrolet. I would hope so because the other one is badly mangled. 107 laps down for Gordon, 48 laps down for Marlin. Minimum lap time that they have to run here tonight is a 25.31 second lap. Battle for the fifth position and Kevin Harvick, the 29 car, takes it away. Brett Bodine's car has just been reported out of the race due to overheating. Mike Wallace's car is in the garage as well. Kevin LePage and Elliot Sadler also both off the track. Tony Stewart started back in 33rd position. He's closing in on six spot. Walking through the garage here this afternoon, talking to the mechanics. Who's the favorite to win? They all told me Tony Stewart is so fast. It's unbelievable. But it's about to be lap 150, and he's not leading. Matt? Now, and after his first pitch stop on lap 29, he's been climbing about 10 spots every 25 to 30 laps. But like you mentioned, his prediction of lap 150 of being in the lead is probably not going to happen. He's had trouble. His car a little bit loose. About 10 laps ago, he wanted some confirmation from his crew chief, Greg Zimidelli, who became a new father on Wednesday, about which way to turn the brake bias. Because he wasn't exactly sure, but he's not going to make the lead by lap 150. All right, let's see if Tony Stewart is running, if gaining on Ricky Rudd or losing ground. He's 5.16, 5.17. Now he's lost some ground as he went up to pass the 21 car, the lap car. You can see that he cost Tony Stewart about a tenth of a second. Five point two seven. Right along with him, we'll see. Just increased the distance by about two tenths. Tony's back where he started. Nice little wiggle there coming across the start finish line. So it looks like the Tony Stewart right now is about five hundredths of a second per lap slower than Ricky Rudd. And Tony, you don't want to turn that brake bias to the right because clockwise is more rear brake. And if you're loose, it's going to be worse. Stewart hanging out in seventh spot, trying to get sixth away from Ward Burton, which he will do with relative ease. And he just blew by Ward. Gordon back on pit road. What color do you think that car is, Benny? I don't have any idea, but I was really looking forward to seeing this car under the lights and seeing it change colors and what have you. All right, come on, take a guess. What color is that car? There is a name for it. You good there? Uh, I have no idea. Absolute purpling prism. I'd have, that would have been my <laughs> second guess. That yeah. would have been my second That's guess. the official name for that color. Blue would have been the first one. Matt? Well, I can't give you the name of the paint color, Alan, but if you wanted to paint your own car or your Harley, it's $1,500 a gallon. How about those numbers, huh? Uh, no thanks. You got a Harley? Painting the tank and the fenders on my Harley with that stuff would cost more than the bike did. <laughs> Man.
So Gordon now 111 laps down and headed back out on track. Going to be a big hit in the points for him tonight. Good thing he had a big lead coming in. Here's a look at our Wendy's race menu as we continue our coverage of the race for the championship next weekend. It goes back to NBC. Loudoun, New Hampshire. Second visit of the season of the Magic Mile. Then it's on to Dover and the Monster Mile. A brand new track in Kansas City and Charlotte for 500 miles. All that upcoming on TNT and NBC. The race for the championship. Going to be a little more interesting race after tonight. Provided that man can run to the finish after Jeff Gordon had his early problems with Sterling Marlin. Got a new guy chasing Rudd. Rusty Wallace has moved into second about 10 laps ago. And Dale Jr. has fallen back to the fourth position. But I'm sure that Rusty, that Ricky Rudd's crew is telling him they've got a new player in this deal. The guy in sixth spot right now, Tony Stewart, the last two or three laps, Tony Stewart has been faster than Ricky Rudd. Napa Field summary. Wallace, Rudd, Gordon, Marlin, Brett Bodine have been the five drivers who've led. Had a lot of cautions in the opening laps. Just a couple of cars officially out of the race. Mike Wallace from an accident and Brett Bodine from overheating. Kevin LePage is behind the wall. They're continuing to work on his car. Lead lap got 30 cars right now in the same circuit with the leader. And here comes Kevin Harvick. Well, he was till he had that little slide there. Marty. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr., you guys were just talking about how well or how poorly his car actually is running right now. He is tied in the middle and really loose off. And what happens is when he's tied in the middle, when the car finally turns, it makes the car loose. So they have to fix the tied in the middle problem first before the loose off will help out. That's exactly right, Marty. What happens is when you're pulling the car down, you got those front tires turned. And when you get off the corner, finally, those front tires get a grip and it just swings the rear car around and makes it loose. We got trouble up in two. Buckshot Jones, Ron Hornaday involved. And it looks like Matt Kenseth has gotten a piece of it. Seventh caution. Ah. Oh. Here they come, back to the caution. And Rudd holds the lead. What a shame for Hornaday. Sure was, had a great run going. We see a little fire under the hood as he tries to get the car to a fire extinguisher. To a fire <laughs> extinguisher. Now, we see the fire under the car. Not very happy with the 44 about the looks of it. Okay, last night when two guys who were involved in an accident parked next to each other, it got kind of interesting on the track. This doesn't look like it has the intensity. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think right now that Ron Hornaday, as we see him taking his gloves off and getting ready to get out of the car, I just think he's too disappointed right now to do too much of anything. I, I, I believe he may ask, he may have a conversation here. Uh, he didn't get the chance to have that conversation. <laughs> Buckshot wisely. That, he, he looked like he wanted to, though, <laughs> yeah. didn't he? Oh, that's too bad. Ron had a great going, great, great run going in the early laps. That car yeah, is a mess. Ran real good last night, too, in the uh, push race. Buckshot Jones has taken his car into the garage area. Don't look, Ron. You're not going to be happy what you see under there. And Matt Kenseth, the third car involved. Pit road is closed, so we'll take a commercial break here. Come back for the pit stops and the restart on TNT. At the Richmond International Raceway, under caution once again, seventh time in the Chevrolet Monte Carlo 400. Watch the seven teams, Matt Kenseth. As Hornaday is spinning down the racetrack, Kenseth tries to go, but between him, the inside wall, and Hornaday, and call it mostly Hornaday. Let's see what happens here. We got, right, him, right, got him going down on the inside of the floor. For it's just hard to tell from that angle what if 44 came down on the 14 or the 14 slid up into him. The 14 would have been fine if, if Kansas would have missed him, though. 
Yeah, they would, I don't think they had much damage at all. Matt Yoakum. Evan Harvick was the first car on the leaders to hit his pit box. He says his car was extremely loose, but his crew chief, Kevin Hamlin, says, but you're very fast. He says, yes, but I can't pass anybody. Air pressure adjustment to the right rear. Bill. Air pressure adjustment for Rusty Wallace to put the car back where it was. They got a plastic bag off the grill. He's away today. Here's for Ricky Rudd. No changes. He's out of here. He is beaten by, by Rusty Wallace. Let's go to Marty. Dale Earnhardt Jr. came down pit road. He said, I have a real bad push, but don't fix the loose off problem. Help me turn the car. Half or a pound out of the right front, a pound into the left front, pound into both rear tires. That should help him have more forward bite and up on the track bar. A host of changes for Jr. Because of that, he lost a position on pit road. Did you see that Rusty Wallace group pull out? Yeah, I'll tell you what, that is a pit stop, boys. You guys did great. They trying to get in my pocket, aren't they? Man. <laughs> Wallace, Rudd, Spencer, and then Harvick and Earnhardt Jr. try to decide who got off pit road next between them. NASCAR on TNT from the Richmond International Raceway where the Chevrolet Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes is under caution for a seventh time. Let's check in the garage area with Liz Allison. Ron, you had a great run going out there. What happened? Uh, I had a real good car. I just that run we got extremely tight, and I started putting some rear brake in it. And Buckshot got up in the the marbles up there, and I went off in the corner when I hit the brake. The back of the car came around, and I actually slid straight into him. My own fault. I hate to see uh, them turn up all them race cars. We definitely had a good car. These guys uh, pretty good. I put a good car under me, but just our luck's going. I just hate to see the other cars getting wrecked with it. Uh, this thing's got to turn around for us. It looks like you're walking into the NASCAR trailer. What's the reason for that? Well, I don't know. They asked us to come over, and they, I'm, I'm sure they're going to park us, but it would be the best thing to happen to it. We tore the car up pretty good. and uh, You know, the first star put us behind us. Uh, everybody checked up. Lap car got into somebody up there, and it, it turned us around. We weren't even involved in the accident. We just got spun around. and They put us that far back, so track position was everything. and uh, Just put a bad set of tires on, I guess. Got really extremely tight. and I'll take blame. Car that was running great has had a bad turn tonight, Alan. Hey, BP, remember we had that camera right up in the nose piece of Hornaday's car? Yeah. Remember you said it wouldn't make tonight? Oh, yeah. Check this out. There it is. That's the camera I'm talking about. Oh, we got a little damage there. As he goes down, watch Kansas. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> hey, they, they can fix that, can't they? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Insurance Company. I've got a question for you about this camera I own. Than you, pretty cat. <laughs> Join NASCAR as they celebrate the American family with Looney Tunes diecast collectibles. Bugs, Taz, Marvin the Martian, and more of your favorite paint schemes are all available by logging on to NASCAR.com or enter America Online keyword NASCAR and select the store now. That's Sylvester and Tweety on the uh, Kenny Wallace car tonight. Liz? I'm with Buckshot Jones, who's another guy back here in the garage area. Buckshot, you don't look very happy. What happened? I don't know. We didn't start off to have a good night. Uh, we thought we were going to be pretty good, just a little bit too off on the chassis. And, you know, got the car running where it was halfway decent there. And I don't know, when we wanted to, and somebody got in the back of it and ended up in the wall. It looks like you're still working on it. You're going to try to get back out there? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, we need to get as many points as we can. Uh, it's tore up pretty good, so we're going to get it the best we can and go back out there. Well, Alan, welcome to Richmond. Yeah, six cars in the garage. What's that, Wall? Oh, Buckshot needs a good run. I mean, he's having yeah. a terrible year, and I feel for him there. Still under caution, they're blowing the track off at Richmond. We are located just outside the city limits of Richmond, Virginia, in Henrico County, to be specific, where the Richmond International Raceway tonight hosts the Chevy Monte Carlo 400. Here is our update on the Coca-Cola racing family and where they stand. There they stand. How about Kyle Petty? Up yep. to 12. Tell you, Kyle, he has marched to the front quietly, but started 36th. Dale Jarrett, kind of a struggling night for DJ so far, 16th. John Andretti involved in an early spin. 
Here's our NASCAR Bush Series update. They ran an absolutely wild and crazy race here at Richmond last night. Guys spinning each other out, punches thrown. Through it all, Jimmy Spencer dominated and won the race. And that was just in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Bodine, great run. Johnny Sauter, fifth place in his first time out for Richard Childress. And you see Kevin Harvick with a 274-point lead. Next race for the Bush Series is a week from Saturday at the Monster Mile in Dover, Delaware. Here's our Craftsman Truck Series update. Jack Sprague and Kevin Harvick traded the lead twice in the final laps Thursday here at Richmond. Sprague took the win. And we are back racing. And the Winston Cup event here at Richmond with Rusty Wallace leading. Mark Martin's 28th place, first car lap down, trying to get back on the lead lap. That's Jimmy Spencer. Third place girl on the outside of Mark. Clears Mark Martin, takes off after Ricky Rudd. Wallace, Rudd, Spencer, Harvick, Earnhardt Jr., then Stewart, Ward Burton, Johnny Benson, Terry Labonte, up to ninth. Battle for the lead, here's Rudd on that left rear corner of Rusty Wallace down in one. And that 28 is on the bottom. Hooked up down there. We can see that Red it says one tenth of a second behind. Now he's just six hundredths of a second. And check it out side by side down the back. But Rusty Wallace prevails once again. It's like you were talking earlier, Wally, that, that Rudd's car just needs the whole racetrack. Yeah, he gets in really good. He gets to the center good, but in order to jam the gas on the middle off, to keep that momentum going, you need to let the car slide up to the wall. If you hold it down on the bottom line, you actually scrub speed off getting off the turn. But Ricky Rudd realizes that he needs to get by Rusty Wallace while these tires are nice and cool and he's got some kind of grip on the bottom of the racetrack. That's why he's trying so hard. Just can't get off a of turn two. Every time he looks like he has the nose out in front, they get to the turn two and Rusty comes out ahead of him. Yeah. And, and, you know, Ricky's only hope right there is that Maybe Rusty drives it in a little bit too deep and slides up the racetrack, and Ricky can get that half car advantage getting through the center and then pull up off, off the turn. But man, Rusty just right now has got his car working a lot better than he had it earlier. Kevin Harvick closing in the back of Jimmy Spencer. Yeah, front six cars all right there together. Let's check speeds at the line. Looking pretty good for the top two. But we, meanwhile, Harvick's on the inside of Spencer. Could not make it, had to back off. Now, based on the last run, I think Tony Stewart's car was the better of these six cars after they've got a bunch of laps on their tires. Let's go through the field and check out where the front runners are and how their races are progressing. We start with Bill Weber. Well, a good, uh, another good night for Rusty Wallace at Richmond. He wasn't really happy when they made the air pressure change on the previous pit stop, so they put the tire pressure back. His car does not start off strong. You saw that in the battle with Rudd, but it does seem to get better longer. Rusty reminded Robin Pepper to his Gucci. No air pressure changes late in the race. The car just will not respond. Rusty leads. Ricky Rudd is in second, Dave. And Bill Ricky Rudd trying to win his first race here since 1984. I just checked with Michael McSwain, his crew chief. No adjustments to the 28. They like the way the car is handling. They didn't even change any air pressure, Bill. 
Jimmy Spencer is having another great run, third week in a row. Can they finally make it pay off? His car gets loose deep in the run, but that's Spencer's style. So they didn't make any changes on that last stop, except for four tires and fuel. Jimmy Spencer, another strong run. He's got the eight right on his bumper, Marty. And that is Dale Earnhardt Jr. who is right on Jimmy Spencer's bumper. They made a whole host of changes on that last stop. They changed the air pressure in every tire. They also made a track bar adjustment, hoping to loosen him up just a little bit. Now, what Dale Jr. has done on the racetrack is he has found a line that he likes. It's not the lower groove. It's not the higher groove. It's about a half lane up as he fights Jimmy Spencer going down the front stretch. He likes that half groove lane right in the middle to Matt Yoakum. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. just took away the fourth position from Kevin Harvick. Harvick says his car is good, but he still cannot pass even after that air pressure adjustment in the right rear. Back in May, he finished 17th, one lap down. He said when he came back here, he wanted to improve on that because this place had his number. Also, Tony Stewart is riding in six. Wally Dallenbach was right. After about 15 or 20 laps, the 20 car of Stewart really seems to come in. The problem for Stewart right now, though, is he's got radio trouble. They've gone back and forth between their first and second radio, but the team is having a huge difficulty hearing Stewart. A lot of noise on the radio to Marty. Get back to Marty in just a second. How about that wiggle for Dale Jr. off turn four last lap? Dale Jr. is really loose. I'm just trying to see if he still has the same problem he had earlier, which was being tight first and making the car loose. That what it looks like to UBP. It looks like he's got the car turning and it's really leaning over, getting off the off the turn. And you like we kept talking about, when you get off the turn and those front tires catch hold of the racetrack and stop sliding, then the back end wants to jump out from under the car. He did a great job to save that thing. Let's go back, take another look at it. This is two laps ago now off of turn four. <laughs> Back and forth, that slide. And that doesn't look big, but believe me, folks, from inside that car, that was big. This is the race for third. These guys, when we, we see these fellas try to make the pass, off two is where they really have the trouble. When they get on the inside, like Jimmy Spencer, here comes Junior on the inside of Spencer. Turn two is where he's going to really have his problem getting off that corner. This time, Spencer backed off and let Junior go. So, Junior third, Spencer back to fourth in front of Harvick fifth, and Stewart sixth. Ward Burton is your seventh place runner. Marty? And Ward was tight on that last run. Allen coming off the big win in the Southern 500, having a very solid performance. Right now, as you said, in seventh place, they took two rounds of wedge out of the left rear, trying to tighten up Ward Burton. The car that Ward is driving tonight is not the car that was supposed to be here. They built a brand new car to, to come to Richmond. They tested it Wednesday. Ward didn't like it. They brought their same old car back, Bill Weber. Johnny Benson currently running eighth on the racetrack at an eventful Friday, lost their primary car here in a wicked crash, but the team has worked hard to keep Benson in contention here at Richmond this weekend. Johnny said they've been the best car he feels in one and two. Right now, they're just being patient as we cross the halfway mark in this race. 15.31 for Benson's crew and the Babylon Bunch on their last pit stop. So Johnny Benson trying to take a backup car to victory lane. Behind him on the racetrack in the running order is Terry Labonte. Tenth two weeks ago at Bristol, 11th last week at Darlington. Maybe not big numbers, but they are if you Terry Labonte. A very frustrating season for the entire Kellogg's crew. But coming back tonight, also carrying one of the Looney Tune characters on board, trying to inspire the entire team with the antics of the Roadrunner. That's what Terry would like to be tonight and run away from everybody. The last time Terry Labonte had back-to-back -back top 10 finishes, Bristol and Texas in July of 2000. Marty? And his brother Bobby Labonte is running 11th on the track. Terry just passed him. Bobby has been loose everywhere all night long. 
He has a problem also with the brakes, just a little bit of a problem. When he goes and hits the brake into the corner, he feels a vibration in the front. It's nothing too significant, but still a little bit of concern for Bobby Labonte. Now, normally, some teams might be able to help that out with a brake bias. We've talked about that a lot, a dial that the driver can turn to add more front brake or more rear brake. Bobby Labonte does not run one of those dials. He has not run one for about two years now, so he cannot fix that problem inside the race car and cannot help those vibrating brakes. To Matt Yoakum. Kyle Petty has climbed from 36 to 11. I spoke with his crew chief, Chris Hussey. He said Kyle's not said anything on the radio about the car tonight. And usually when Kyle doesn't talk, that means the car is very good. Still no adjustments on this 45 car. Tonight he picked up his first career win here in 1986 on the old track configuration. He's never won a race in Winston Cup for Petty Enterprises. Maybe that will come tonight. But right now he's on par for his best finish of the season, Marty. Jeff Burton having a very solid run on the racetrack. They were very upset after that last pit stop with Jeff Gordon's team. Frank Stoddard, the crew chief for Jeff Burton, came off the tool back, toolbox and went and asked Robbie Loomis, the crew chief for Jeff Gordon, are you going to pit under this caution? Robbie Loomis said no. So Jeff Burton in his pit stall, he's pitted right behind Jeff Gordon, pitted very far forward in his pit stall. Then Jeff Gordon came down pit road, blocked them in. They lost a lot of spots on pit road, but now they're gaining them back on the racetrack. Dave Burns. Instead of gaining, Ken Schrader's team may be losing. Alan alluded to early in the program how they had worked on getting through the middle of the corner with a shock absorber change that they made in yesterday's final practice. Well, it's gotten tight in the center again, and the team has had to rethink how they're going to adjust on Schrader to get him through this race. His drought right now, his winless drought, is way up to 328, and they would like to break that tonight. Alan? Schrader trying to fend off Jerry Nadu for the 13th place. Nadu started 39th. Moved his way up quietly, but nicely through the field. Yeah. You... Oh, almost gets to the back of the 36 car. I talked to Tony Fur, the crew chief on the 25 car, and they said they really did not get a lot of practice in the 25 car. So basically the setup they have in this car is the same thing that Jeff Gordon had in his. And they thought they would adjust it to Jerry's style as the race progressed. And you want to talk about someone who's gone no place tonight. Whoa, a little contact there. Dale Jarrett started 16th. He's running 15th. And we're just past halfway in this race. Here's Dale. You know, I want to go back and mention about Bobby Labonte said he's got a little bit of a vibration. And that possibly what I talked about earlier when they when they get the brakes real hot they make that they spike that temperature sometimes that buildup will you'll get a bunch of material on the rotor and that rotor will vibrate because of that and that could be a possibility of what Bobby Labonte's going through right now. Six drivers in the garage area Liz is with one of them now. early on but then you started coming around what happened out there well we were really struggling tonight with our dwell tours we uh, just really missed the setup tonight and uh, as far as the wreck I'm not really sure uh, Hornaday was involved so I imagine it ran in the side of somebody and uh, you know spun out and I couldn't I couldn't get out of the way so uh, just the wrong place at the wrong time still working on your car so you're going to try to get back out there yeah I think we'll get it back out it's mostly suspension damage so uh, we'll just go out and ride around for the rest of the night and uh, make the best we can out of it they will make the best of it, Alan. Well, there you have it. Yeah. Rusty Wallace is your leader. We're just past halfway, 219 of 400 completed. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. All right, EJ, a little down under lingo lesson. Of course, I've been to Australia. BP, you need to figure out some of those down under terms. Oh, yeah, like. Grill on the Barbie, or yeah. shrimp on the Barbie. Or... Ah, you're, you're yeah, way off never... base. <laughs> Goodwill Games from Brisbane, Australia, following the race here on TNT. Hope you'll stay with us. No, like walkabout. You know what a walkabout is? Uh, no. Okay. I do know that the 28 car all of a sudden is very close to the two car. NASCAR on TNT from the Richmond International Raceway. Coverage of the race for the championship continuing the Chevy Monte Carlo 400.
just past halfway in the race. Big story of the night tonight. Jeff Gordon, the championship leader, hit by Sterling Marlin, racing for third position at lap 35. He spent 107 laps in the garage getting repairs. He's out on the track now, 114 laps down in 41st place. Ricky Rudd's running second. Gordon came into the night 342 points up on Rudd in the championship. Stands to lose 100 and change of that tonight if Rudd is able to stay up there and have a good top five finish. On board with Jeff Gordon as he goes down into turn one at Richmond. You can see right now, points if points were awarded for positions right now, Ricky Rudd only 212 back. From 342. But we're not going to award him now. We've got to finish this race. These guys are still racing. Talking about Kenny Schrader, the 36, Jay Nadeau, the 25. You know what the problem for them is? Two other cars have passed them since we saw them last. Oh. Dale Jarrett's gone by in the 13th, Robert Presley in the 14th, and now these two are racing for 15. Can I see a puff of smoke out of Schrader's car? I hope not. That wouldn't be good for him, would it? No, it wouldn't. Usually where there's smoke, there's trouble. That's very profound of you. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything now, so maybe I just did not see what I thought I saw. I saw smoke, Benny. Oh, good. You sound like Tweety Bird there. You didn't think what you thought you saw? Yeah. Well, that may have been a little, I don't know if it was contact, maybe. Contact smoke. Okay, they've been side by side for about 20 of the last 30 laps. Are they having fun or are they getting frustrated? I oh. just want to hit them. I mean, that's what you're feeling. 25's going, man, I need to just bump him out of the way. But I know everybody's watching right now, so. In the meantime, here comes Bobby Hamilton trying to slip underneath. He doesn't know everybody's watching. But it would be bad timing. It would be real bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it is frustrating because these two cars are, they look like they're so equal right now, but they need the same racetrack to be fast. So that's what's making it so difficult. The 25 cannot get up off the corner on the low side. Oh, oh, there we go. There's, there's that slide. little temper I was looking for, BP. That was a slide job. I just want to hit him, that's all. 15th place for Nadeau looking down on Richmond from our U.S. Army Sky Cam. United States Army being Army of One. Got a car scraping the wall up in turns one and two. It is Daffy Duck. He might have a tire down. Jeff Green, right front. And another one's up there. Up there. He's got a tire down. That could have been after hitting the wall, of course, but. Eighth caution of the race. And Rusty Wallace comes back and brings the field to the yellow flag. We'll see some pit stops when we come back in a minute. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Back at the Richmond International Raceway, under caution in the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes for the eighth time in the race. This one coming out with Jeff Green and Rick Mast at the same time, but separately got into the wall in turn one. Pit stops under the caution a moment ago. Rusty Wallace is leaving the pits. We see him, the 28 car right behind him. Then comes the eight, the 26, 29, 20. And after that, I'm not sure. <laughs> You're out of breath. I'm out of breath. Terry Labonte, then Ward Burton, Bobby Labonte, and Jeff Burton, then Kyle Petty. Let's get some reports on the stops, Bill. Well, a good stop for Rusty Wallace. They made a one pound air pressure adjustment. Rusty still trying to find the same field he had earlier in the race. Pit stop 14.02. Another good stop for the two, Dave. Bill Ricky Rudd came in, but he was radioing to the crew that the car was a little bit tight getting into the corner, but he really didn't want to mess it up and make it too loose. So they made no adjustments to the 28 car. Marty? They have a good stop for Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s team, 15.84 on the stop, a little bit tight from the middle off, but he said it was much better on that run than it was the run before. They went up one round on the track bar. He came in third and out third. We're going ready, getting ready to go green back out on the racetrack. Mark Martin again trying to get a lap back from leader Rusty Wallace and again unsuccessful. Here 
Here comes Rudd for the lead, looking inside. And like BP said earlier, this is the time to do it. This is the best your tires are going to be. So you really need to get this done in the next eight or nine laps where you got the best grip in your tires. All right, here comes Ricky. He's looking on the inside, but Rusty gets that great runoff, too. mentioned that both Rick Mast and Jeff Green have taken their cars behind the wall after the damage from the flat tires we saw a minute ago. Now does Ricky Rudd become offensive or defensive because he has Dale Earnhardt Jr. right behind him. Ricky Rudd showing him just 15 hundredths of a second behind the leader. Earnhardt Jr., four tenths of a second. Folks, you can see four tenths, now three tenths. It isn't much. Oh, Cut slow. Here it goes, Rudd. He is doing everything he can to get down there. Now here's where he's got the problem, getting the fight off the corner. Two car just shoots out of there. Ricky will drive underneath him, but won't be able to get off the corner. Now, the other player in this equation is Jeremy Mayfield in the 12 car. He's the first one to lap down. He's in 24th place. Obviously very fast at this point, but he's getting it around these leaders and catch a caution flag. And here comes Junior on the outside of Ricky Rudd. Todd Bodine was off the pace on the back stretch a minute ago. He's gathered it back up and continued on. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. takes over that second spot. Jeremy Mayfield, the lap car between Jr. and Ricky Rudd. Fifth place. Harvick in the 29, Stewart in the 20, Ward Burton in the 22. Matt? Ward Burton and Tony Stewart keep battling back and forth for that sixth position. Remember, Stewart is very good after about 15 or 18 laps. He was very fortunate on his pit stop. The 27 car was in. Stewart had to angle around him and had a bad position in his pit box. Fortunately, he didn't have to back up and lose even more time or lose spots. They made air pressure adjustments in both left side tires. They went a half a pound down and a half a round of wedge. He still needs forward bite. Here's, here it is, race lead. <laughs> Both looking at the same thing there, BP. Junior's on the roll. Now here's where Junior had the trouble earlier, was running down low and then getting sideways, getting off, getting off off the corner. That looked pretty good, that corner. Junior has not led yet tonight. Started the race in eighth place. I think that Dale Jr. wants to pass Rusty Wallace, but I don't think that he's going to try as hard as Ricky Rudd did because I think that he realizes that Ricky Rudd tried so hard that right now he probably has built the air pressure up the right front tire and his car is not quite good. Red Rudd needs to calm down and run a few laps to let his car come back in. That's the problem here with the five car, it looks like. He's got some sparks coming off the side of that thing. Exhaust pipe hanging out, maybe? Dragging on the ground? Yep. You got it. Uh, we've talked about how much Terry Labonte needs to have a good run. Black flag's up for him. Can't beat that. I don't know if that tailpipe's going to make it around many more times. Oh man, what a terrible, terrible break. Running in ninth at the time of this trouble. That's too bad for Terry. And it looks like the Junior's car just all of a sudden, just in a lap, slowed down about two miles per hour.
already fallen a full second back of Rusty Wallace and you can see the pressure run is now put on him for that runner up spot. Well that lap Junior's car was back up to speed so I'm assuming last lap he had got sideways pushed or something that caused him to lose that three or four mile per hour average. There are where the drivers in the running for the Winston million dollar bonus are positioned in the race Earnhardt Junior Ward Burton Bobby Labonte all in the top ten. They've given away the money ten times out of eighteen tries that they've had that they've had these million dollar bonus races so he's got he's got uh, fluid coming out of there too. BP see that dripping down there. Bill Weber. Well, Terry Labonte on pit road. They're going to look where the sparks were coming from. They had to answer the black flag from NASCAR. Terry very disappointed on the radio. They were hoping they'd be able to stay out and maybe catch a caution, but that didn't happen. This team cannot buy a break. Just we were talking about how well things were going. They just had another good pit stop. They've got right side tires on Terry's car and send him back out, but uh, lost valuable laps here on pit road under the green. It's, there's some kind of fluid coming out of the front of that car. Terry Labonte has made contact with the outside wall, hasn't he? Looks like it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. All the scuff marks on the right side tires. And, and they, all of a sudden, the 29 car is losing positions. Or maybe he's trying to gain one, trying to pass Spencer, huh? Yep, Spencer's in fourth, Harvick's fifth, Stewart's sixth. Harvick trying to move forward and see if he can get around Spencer. 256 complete of 400 here in Richmond. Rusty Wallace is your leader. The Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes on TNT is brought to you by Casey Atwood and the Duke Crew. Fueled by Mountain Dew. By Pep Boys. All you need to know is where to go. Pep Boys. And by Team Monte Carlo. The cars more champions depend on. Chevy. We'll be there. We're under caution in the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 at Richmond. Terry Labonte's problems went from bad to worse. He's crashed in turn one. You see Terry is out of the car and walking away. Let's take a look here. See you got the, the, the pipes hanging here but there's fluid. All the stuff coming off the pipe here. There's water. I don't know where that's coming from but you can see Right in here, all that water coming out. And there's quite a bit. Now, I don't know if he slipped in that when they went back out or the pipe came off. Let's take a look at the crash and see what we can see. If you looked at the top of that frame. Yeah, the pipe is up here. You could see, well, there's another piece of it, though. Something came out from under that car and he ran it over. Yeah. Now, there's the, flu there's the fluid in the pitch stall when they left. I don't know what the, idea what that is BP. Oh, it looked like water. If, if we get a chance to see that again if you look right out behind the car like right around the start finish line you're going to see something come flying up. Watch the car as it comes toward the start finish line and you're going to see something come flying out just as the car turns sideways behind it. Right, see it right see there. The see right there. Yep. Right there. Something's yep. come out from behind the car and he's run it over and cut the see there's the piece of metal coming down the center of the track right there. Yeah. Right up there he's run over his own tailpipe I think but then if you keep watching see right there there's something big going up the racetrack there which looks that like is the tailpipe yeah the uh, part of the tailpipe or the other tailpipe whatever no good yep so from a top 10 run to problems on pit road to out of the race after a crash for Terry the body all in the matter of a couple of laps Back at Richmond, under the caution flag, cleanup continues from Terry Labonte's crash down in turn one. Watch Kyle Petty's car here as he comes down the backstretch, guys. Yeah, you see right here, something's going to fly but right off the back of that wrecker. All that stuff. That looks like a brake hose. Right, it looks like. Man, did it make a mess. It just exploded out from under the car. Wow. <laughs> or a seagull. <laughs> no. Well, you never say never, but I don't think so. No, probably not. <laughs> we'll come back to Richmond in a minute. They're still cleaning up from Terry Labonte's crash. Ow, 
Why more you spin me around? Does Taz know how to say ouch? <laughs> Terry does. Boy, he sure does. Cleaning up the caution from the Terry Labonte crash down in turn number one, the ninth yellow flag of the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. There's old Taz Harvick, fifth position. Now let's go into the garage to Liz Allison. Terry, you had a great run going out there. What happened? Well, we did. Our Kellogg Chevy was running good tonight, and uh, we were really good on long runs. I, I got into the wall a little bit coming down the front straightaway, and I knocked the tailpipe loose. We came in, and uh, bungee corded it up, and uh, I guess it came loose and got under the right rear tire, and uh, that was it. We're done for the night then. Now, there were some reports that there was a lot of fluid. Would that be what that was coming from? No, that, that came from after I spun and hit the wall. It broke something, I guess, but... Uh, uh, the tailpipe came off. I, that's what I think happened. I'm not sure. It felt like the tailpipe came off. Got another right rear tire. But you're okay. I'm fine. Yeah. Thanks. All right, Alan. That's too bad for Terry. Had a good night going. He is out, and we are back under the green flag. Jeremy Mayfield's first car lap down in 23rd place. And Jimmy Spencer report in the pit area that he has trouble with his third gear, losing spots on the restart because of that. Yeah, it's no third gear at all now on the 26. No third gear, and they, when one leaves, sometimes the others follow. Challenge for the lead. Dale Jr. going to try Rusty again. Not this time. Got a little hello from Mayfield on the back bumper, too. Kurt Busch trying to get on the inside of Stacy Compton. These guys are racing for a spot, but they're both a lap down. Compton's 24th, Bush is 25th, Mark Martin in the 6th is 26th. Oh, Mayfield up the hill. Kind of drops him back into a race for position with the 97 and 92. All those cars are lapped down. Mayfield's got some big problems. Yeah, he really slowed down there, getting off the two, really stacked him up behind him. He's got a tire going down or something. So he'll be heading for pit road next time by. Whatever it is. Looks like the tires are up. I don't know. We'll find out. But Jeremy Mayfield off the pace and in trouble. Matt, what is it? He just reported into his crew chief, Peter Suspenzo. He does have a tire going down, a 12 car coming into his pit. This team just cannot seem to find luck anywhere. Last week at Darlington, two laps ago, had a shot for a win. Misfortune, they're gonna change all four. It looks like the tires are up on the right side and the left, so we're gonna have to check the pressures. And he's finally down and away. More tough luck for Mayfield. Don't know. He obviously had a quick problem there, getting off a two and then getting into three. Rusty Wallace holding off Dale Jr. again. Seems like if Rusty can hold him off for the first few laps after a restart, at, this, at least at this stage of the race, he's able to get away. Jr. second, Rudd third, Harvick fourth, Stewart fifth, Spencer's back to sixth. And you've got Ward Burton, Bobby Labonte, Kyle Petty, and now Dale Jarrett into the top ten. Marty, well, you 
exactly right, Alan. On the restart, Dale and Hunt Jr. tries to get the lead from Rusty Wallace. They want to get the bonus points for leading a lap tonight. They are fighting to get up in the top five in points. They are currently seventh, but very close to Bobby Labonte in the point standing. So they do want to lead a lap. Run, or, uh, Dale Jr. will get up there, and then a spotter, Ty Norris, will tell him back off because the rotors are getting too hot. Don't push it too hard. We can lead a lap later. Way Rusty Wallace is running, that might be a little tougher than they think it's going to be leading the lap later. You guys, uh, Matt tells us from Pit Road it was the right rear tire that was down on air pressure on Jeremy Mayfield's car. Select Mayfield three laps down in 29th place, cut tire on the right rear. That's too bad. Need to follow up on Jeff Green and Rick Mast, who went to the garage area, both on the same lap with right fronts down and damage to their machines. A phrase we heard a lot in the garage leading up to this race, brake heat, and how it'll affect the tires. BP, uh, I think you hit on it earlier. Oh, we talked about they get so much heat built up in the rotors that it melts the bead, especially on the right front wheel. And what happens is it smells a beat, the tire goes down, and you go flying up into the wall. That always is a problem in a racetrack where you use a lot of brakes. Here, Martinsville, Phoenix. And if you're not familiar with the term, the bead on a tire is the point at which the tire seals to the rim. Makes that airtight lock, if you will. And that's only about an inch from a, a red hot rotor brake rotor if if these guys really use brakes like ty norris told junior a moment ago he's standing down in turn one he watches the car going a corner from his spotting position when he sees those rotors getting cherry red he tells junior back off a little bit because you're overheating the brakes and, and, the, and the richmond you really have to run a lot of front brake because he's like going into turn one it's such a big wide arc if you put too much rear brake in it, the car gets sideways real easy as you're arcing down into turn one. So normally you have to run a little bit more front brake than you would at a place like Martinsville where you go straight into the corner more than you do here going into turn one at Richmond. Still got 22 cars on the lead lap and 115 laps to go. Right now, Rusty Wallace is out in front. Can he get his seventh Richmond win tonight? Richmond International Raceway, where NASCAR on TNT is bringing you the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. Log on to NASCAR.com and play the AutoTrader.com Move the Race Sweepstakes for your chance to win a $25,000 shopping spree on AutoTrader.com and other great prizes. I vote for Benny getting from the war wagon to the booth in 10 minutes. You know, we need to do one of those documentaries one week where we have the camera follow him making his sprint. You know, that they, they do the thing with the guys, the track and field guys, and they're running in slow motion, and here comes Benny just leaping up the grandstand steps. I watched the whole thing. I think we'd call it a brisk walk. I don't think we'd call it a sprint. I was thinking more of a meander. Yeah, well, that too. <laughs> Second place, still a good fight. Dale Jr., Ricky Rudd, Kevin Harvick, Tony Stewart. Here comes Happy Harvick on the inside of Rudd. Well, that inside just hard to get some grip down there. It sure is. Why is the question? Why is it that way on this racetrack? Well, I mean, you can get the grip down there, but you just can't do it and run low getting off the corner. When they start running some laps and these tires get nice and hot, when you down low, the, the car starts sliding across that asphalt. And you have to, you just cannot get on the throttle quickly enough, otherwise the car will push directly into the wall. Tony Stewart still has not led yet tonight. Said his goal was to be in the lead by lap 150. Hey Tony, it's 295 now, better get going. Bill Elliott trying to move through Robert Presley and take the 11th spot away and does. On that last caution flag, most all of the leaders stayed on the track, but a handful did pit. Elliott was one of them. Elliott, Joe Nemechek, Johnny Benson, Ricky Craven, Dave Blaney, Todd Bodine, 
and Jeff Burton are the cars who are on the lead lap who pitted. So you're watching Benson and Nemechek and Elliott here on fresher tires try to work their way through some guys who stayed out last time. Farthest forward, well, hang on back to that. First, this news flash. Tony Stewart is through. That's fourth place. I'm just gonna say the farthest forward of the guys who pitted under that last caution is Jeff Burton in the 99 car. He's running in 10th right now. There's Jeff. As he tries his best to chase down the 88 car of Dale Jarrett, who's trying to chase down the 22 of Ward Burton. That's eighth and ninth. Dave, what about the 88 car? Well, Benny, they'd be ecstatic with a ninth place finish anywhere in the top 10. They've been chasing that car literally all day long. We talk about, you know, little adjustments here and little adjustments there. They've gone over eight pounds of air adjustments. They've had over more than five rounds of wedge on the car. And they've raised the or they've moved the track bar more than an inch tonight, trying to get that car to stop being loose. It's running the best it has all night. And they've been telling DJ, oh, by the way, just keep in mind, you've passed more cars than anybody else tonight. They keep going back, they keep going forward, and now the car is the best it's been. And that's what makes a championship team. Ricky Rudd trying his best to put some heat on Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. So check up on the gaps there, huh? Yeah, he's probably tight getting off. He had to just get off the gas just a little bit to get that front grip. Well, I heard him into the rev limiter too on the front side. Yeah, you did. You did. Going down into turn three, he was on the rev limiter. Let's listen. Oh, this is coming straight away. Yep, he's in it going into one too. And that rev limiter on these cars, the engine builders were telling me, are set at 9,200 tonight. And an easy thing to do here is overdrive. Get, get into the corner way too deep, and the rev limiter helps you not drive that far into the corner. Roll it in. Can Rudd get that grip on the bottom of the racetrack? My guess would be no. Hasn't been able to all night. Rudd has been under people and under people and under people, but every time he comes off a of turn number two on the bottom side of somebody, he can't stay with them. They get side by side briefly. Stewart's closing in. And check that out. Last lap, Tony Stewart was the fastest, fastest car in the top ten. Dave. Well, Benny Allen, uh, Allen referred to Ricky Rudd not being able to turn. He has the same problem that I reported on earlier. He'll get into the turn, he'll start to turn it, and then it will start to snap loose on him. And so he's very cautious when he gets down on the bottom. I think Earnhardt got a little bit loose up off the two and they had to check up a little bit and Ricky checked up and a 20 just filled that hole down on the bottom. Now they've got a slow car as they come off the corner. Buckshot Jones right in front of these three. And he bails, gets out of the way. Still there, still there. Talk a lot, it seems like in the last month or so about Tony Stewart's car being better on the long runs. We've run 37 laps since the restart. Look at how red the rotors are on Tony Stewart's car. He's got the front brake, he's working. Go down there. Watch when we go down in the corner. Clear, all clear. Yeah, couldn't see him there. He's gonna have to give it up. He can't run under Rudd either off that corner. He had to give it up. And, and you have to, if you just stay down there, you're just abusing your tires. And you're gonna just finally get that right front so hot, you get into that danger area of possibly going to, you know, do, talk about what we did on the brakes, getting that right front hot and right front tire. Back and down. Closing in, final segment of the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 at Richmond on TNT.
Next weekend, our coverage of NASCAR continues from the New Hampshire International Speedway, beginning Friday with Bud Pole qualifying on CNN Sports Illustrated at 3 Eastern time. Saturday, happy hour, 11 in the morning on CNN SI. Then Saturday afternoon, the NASCAR Bush North Series from New Hampshire on NBC at 2 Eastern and the New Hampshire 300 one week from tomorrow, 1230 Eastern time on NBC. Dale Jr. sliding back. He's about to lose his third position in the last few laps, guys. Well, for some reason, I guess Jr. felt like his car was really going away because a few laps ago, he just moved over and let the 28 and 20 go by. Marty, what are they saying down there? Well, you got that one right, BP. He is tight right now and uh, having his hand full out there. No uh, grip off the corners either, so really tight right now. He's letting all these guys go by so they can get some clean racetrack is what he's looking for. Let's go back and take a look at what Benny was talking about a second ago. He comes off turn two and just pulls over to the inside. Let's Ricky Rudd and Tony Stewart. And look at those brake rotors on Stewart's car. That is the Mark Martin move. That we've seen Mark make so many times. For now, Junior hanging on. Harvick not able to finish that pass. Dale Junior in fourth behind Rusty Wallace, your leader, with 81 laps to go. Rusty Wallace leads the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes at 77 laps to go. Wallace has been out in front for 222 of the 322 that have been run so far tonight. Man on the move at this point in the race, though, is that driver, Jeff Burton. Where did he restart after he changed four tires back in 15? Back at lap number 269, and now at 323, he's picked his way to fifth. I guess it was 13th, but he has picked up eight spots against some awfully fast race cars. Marty? And these guys are on the momentum of two top tens in the last four races, Allen. They tried this strategy earlier in the race, coming down pit road when no one else did, putting on fresh tires. It worked then, it's working now. They've been fighting loose and tight all night long, but on the run before this one, the car was just the best it's been all night long. They had finally gotten it right, and it is outstanding right now. They're really coming up to the field. And again, like we said at the beginning of the race, just now, his, his car is starting to come in. That's the scary part. He is very fast, consistently the fastest car out on the racetrack right now. And, Wally, he is running the bottom of the racetrack. And that's going to make it a lot easier to pass because everybody's running up high. Working on Dale Jr. for fourth. There's Kenny Wallace in the one car. Has just gone a lap down. He's back in the 22nd position. That held up Burton there just for a minute. Certainly wish uh, wish the best to Steve Park at home recovering from the injuries from the Darlington accident of a week ago. Penn's oil team issuing a statement on Friday that it will be conservatively four to six weeks for Steve to be out of that car. But considering the injury that he's got, that's a good thing. He needs it to be smart enough and will be smart enough, I hope, to take the rest and make sure it's healed completely. All you got to do is ask Ricky Craven about that. I agree with you, Alan. There's no reason to push it. You want to come back, you want to come back 100%. Ricky, of course, spent over a year out of a race car after multiple concussions, and he'll be the first to tell you. In fact, he told us here earlier this weekend, trying to come back too soon hurt more than it helped, and he hopes Steve will keep that in mind. It's not life threatening, but you know, getting back in the car might be. And it's, uh, I'm proud of Steve. I'll tell you what, he is smarter than I was back in 1997 when I had three concussions in three weeks. And uh, it got me in a, in a mess. And uh, I just think he's, he's just doing a, a very wise thing, and I commend him. And that's from somebody that's been there. Yeah, exactly. Sign inside the car. Steve, keep digging. We miss you. There it is right there. Is he planting a garden? Th that from you. <laughs> that was Wally. You expected that. Uh, what am I going to do with you? Get well, Steve. All of a sudden, Jeff Burton has run across some faster race cars much faster cars and he's struggling to get by he finally clears junior 
and moves into the fifth position to make that the fourth position. Ken Schrader just put a lap down. He's in 21st place. And Junior doing everything he can to get that car off the corner. He is really sliding that thing. Leader caught some lap traffic. It's allowed second and third to catch him. Rusty's going under the, and Ricky Rudd would love to pass on the outside, but I don't think he's going to be able to. Nope. Todd Bodine was the last one on the lead lap. He's in 20th place. Ward Burton's on pit road, Marty. Here's Tony Stewart on him. He's falling all the way back to 16th right now. He said the car is just terrible. They are extremely tight. They do make an air pressure adjustment. Uh, they were also contemplating a wedge adjustment on Ward Burton's car. They're going to take four tires and uh, very, very tight right now for the Caterpillar Dodge. What about this with Stewart and Rudd? These guys are battling hard. I thought Tony had him cleared back on the backstretch, but Ricky Rudd somehow fought back and he's still there. Those two guys got together back there a little bit ago, and I don't think he's going to get separated. Start banging those tires together like that. You can knock the front end out of alignment, really affect the handling of your car, and you've still got 64 laps to go. Or a puncture a tire like we saw happen to John Andretti just a few laps into the race. Yep. So while they got messing around with each other, Rusty Wallace got back away from them. NASCAR sending a message down from the control tower to both the 20 and 28 pits that there would still be a lot of racing left to go. <laughs> Leaders last pitted at lap 235. It's been 101 laps since they stopped, so if no caution comes out soon, We'll see him on pit road under the green. Rusty Wallace is the leader in the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 at Richmond. 57 laps to go and green flag pit stops in just a few more laps. Now let's take a look at NYPD Blue weeknights at 6 on TNT. PD Blue every weeknight at 6 on TNT. Not going to be green flag pit stops. BP, that could be another right front going down. What do you think? Uh, sure, sure looks like exactly the same thing. We've seen three or four of these tonight. Mike Skinner. And Yosemite Sam has uh, hit the wall. Looney Tune guys had uh, problems tonight. Had a hard yeah. time tonight. Just joining us or haven't been with us the whole night, Jeff Gordon involved in an accident, racing for third with Sterling Marlin at lap 35. Gordon is in 38th place, 116 laps down. Gordon's got a right front down, yep. too. Yep. Now, here come the leaders to pit road. Could be the final stops of the night. How about the pressure on the pit crews? Got to get it done now, Matt. The caution came at a great time for Tony Stewart. He was going to pit in three more laps. He said he needs help up off the corner and a turn in the center. They went up a half a pound in the left rear to Bill. Pound up on the right rear for Rusty Wallace. Remember he said we don't want to go down on air pressures late in the race because it's so late they go up on the right rear. Dave? Once again, no changes for Ricky Rudd. He said to look at the left front fender, not because he thought it was a problem, but so the boys oh, wouldn't on, have trouble on, getting on. the left front tire on. Marty? Jeff Burton wanted a little more grip off of the corners. They went up quarter pound in both rear tires and a very long pit stop. They lose a lot of track position on pit road. Hollywood is upset. Evidently, he had some trouble with the front tires on that 99 car. And you see the entire crew. They had a really good car. They had moved into the third position, and they lost a lot of time on pit road. Rusty Wallace. Wins the race off the pit lane. Ricky Rudd is second. Kevin Harvick third. Dale Jr. fourth. Then Tony Stewart fifth. Dale Jarrett gets out sixth. Followed by Jeff Burton, Bobby Labonte, Johnny Benson, and Bill Elliott. Let's go take a look at what happened to Mike Skinner. That brought out the caution flag. Well... 
He hit the wall. Not conclusive <laughs> evidence. No. But, uh, Can't help you there. It already happened. What happened had already happened. And we see Tony Shoemaker arguing with the officials. The officials said, okay, get back on the other side. There's three up, three officials down there. What's Spen that all about? Spencer was held for a penalty on pit road and the crew obviously arguing the decision. We will follow up on what the assessment of the penalty was, the reason for their displeasure. In just a moment, you're watching NASCAR on TNT. Back at Richmond International Raceway, uh, still under caution in the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. And uh, Jimmy Spencer penalized for this infraction, the back line of his pit box. Right there. They're saying that the rear of his car was behind that line, and that's a pit infraction. But, you know, that's a tough angle, but I say boo. It's pitting outside the box, and that is a one-lap penalty, but they've just reversed the call. They've just allowed Spencer to pass the pace car, make up the lap that he was penalized, and he's back on the lead lap. A very good call. I, I will have to go with that then. Upon further review, common sense prevailed. There you go. Because the, there was no one behind Jimmy Spencer. The five car, Terry Labonte, that was his pit stall. He's out of the race. He's, they're packed up. They're gone. He was not impeding anyone's progress as they tried to leave their pit. So Spencer in 18th place, last car on the lead lap. Still under caution, clean it up with 50 to go here in Richmond and Wallace leading. Back at the Richmond International Raceway, Field getting the signal in one more lap. We go back racing in the Chevy Monte Carlo 400. Jimmy Spencer allowed to pass the pace car, make up the one lap penalty. Now you see him sliding forward in line. He came down pit road in ninth position. And they're going to place him up in line behind Bill Elliott in front of Ricky Craven in the 11th spot for the restart. Well, I think that's a good call. I'm down here on pit road with crew chief Donnie Wingo. I, I know you really don't want to talk right now. You, they claimed you were out of the box. They put you back on the lead lap and put you in ninth. You okay? Yeah, but I mean, we still lost about three more spots and probably or four. I mean, our pit stops have been great all night, but. Uh, you know, I guess we have to take what we get right now. You know, they admitted they made a mistake, and uh, you know, they got a green flag. Green flag. Back underway. Ward Burton in the 22 car is on the tail end of the lead lap, in front of Rusty Wallace, who's the race leader. Ward had pitted under the green flag, then the caution came out, trapping him a lap down. He stayed on track when the other front runners pitted. That's how he got to be first behind the pace car. Robert Presley had a little loop down the front stretch, but he's continued on. Ricky Rudd is hoping that he can use some of these lap cars. Kyle Petty, Ward Burton, some of these cars to be able to get by Rusty Wallace. He's hoping Rusty will choose high, he'll go low, or vice versa. I don't think they're thinking anything about that bump a few weeks ago, do you? <laughs> At Bristol? Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, he's right on that bumper. <laughs> right on it. If you're not familiar with what we're talking about at Bristol, on the last lap, these two cars, the two and 28, the 28 guy in the back of the two going in the third corner on the last lap, kind of pushed him up the hill. Took the spot away. What was it? Third or fourth? Yep. Fourth, fourth spot. Yep. Showed it to you in our pre-race show. Also talked about in our pre-race show. How wild was it going to get tonight? We're down a wild time. 42 to go. Oh, the one car got way high up in turn two. Might have got a little bit of a tap. Kenny Wallace kept it off the wall, though. He continues. He's back in 22nd place, a lap down. Well, we've seen this movie before. First few laps after a restart, but pressures and pressures rusty. If he can't get by right away, and he hasn't succeeded yet, 
Takes Rusty 10 to 12 laps, Alan, 10 to 12 laps, and that's why they went up on the air pressure, trying to cut that time in half here this late in the race. Trouble down the front stretch. Dane Blaney has been spun into the trialable grass, comes back up onto the surface, but nobody gets into him. Caution's out. 11th one of the race. And uh, Ward Burton's going to get his lap back. Oh, look out. Kyle Petty went screaming down there by where Dave Blaney's car sits, trying to get a lap back from Rusty Wallace. And Blaney's car was sitting there in that cloud of smoke. No fire in the engine there for Blaney. No lot, power. A lot of damage to that left rear on his car. Yep, now he's got it fired up. Let's take a look. The, uh, it looks like he got hit by, is that Bill Elliott or Casey Atwood? It's Bill that was right behind him. Yeah, it's a 93 car. It looked like he checked up because of uh, Stacy Compton getting out of shape here. Yeah, and Bill's got a lot of damage on the right front of his car. The 97 car hits the wall. I think that's what started all of it. Yep, and there's Stacy in the back. Gets out of shape and... And Elliott threw Blaney. See yeah. the damage on Elliott's car. Yeah, it's a lot of damage on the right front. Ward Burton does get a lap back. He's on pit road for fresh tires along with Elliott, Benson, and a couple of other lead lap cars. The Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes on TNT is brought to you by Team Monte Carlo. The cars more champions depend on. Chevy will be there by Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. And by Viagra. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. Less than a lap from the restart here at the Richmond International Raceway. Those who pitted on the lead lap, Johnny Benson, Bobby Hamilton, Robert Presley, Ward Burton, Bill Elliott, Jerry Nadeau. Those are the lead lap cars that pitted. Farthest up of them in the running order would be Benson, and he's going to restart in 12. Green, green, green. And 35 laps to go. To decide, can Rusty Wallace hold off Ricky Red? Or all the rest of them, for that matter. See if those new tires come into play for Benson and the other guys. And like we talked about earlier in the show, location, location. Is he too far back to get up there fast enough to work through that traffic in only 30-some laps? Kevin Harvick looking for second on Ricky Rudd. Not yet. Dave, Ricky Rudd has been shadowing Rusty Wallace all night, but he just can't get the lead. And the problem, Alan, is that where Bill reported that Rusty's car comes in after a few laps, Ricky's car pretty much has what it has right now, according to Michael McSwain. He said, we're good for the entire run. Our car doesn't really improve over time. I guess they can only wish from here. And the caution flag is out. Debris has just fallen off the Bill Elliott car. Caution number 12. Wow, a lot more May. You see the damage from the earlier accident has been magnified now that Elliott's gotten back up to speed with that Dodge. Back in a minute. Wrangler presents families of NASCAR. The Petty family has enjoyed success at almost every track, and Richmond International Raceway is no exception. Lee Petty won the Richmond 300 in 1960. A year later, the King began his Richmond reign. Richard Petty took the checkered flag 13 times in 15 years. 21 years later, it was another Petty's turn. Kyle Petty won the spring race here in 1986. For more on the Wrangler families of NASCAR, go online to nascar.com. And it has certainly been a frustrating and at times disappointing season for Kyle Petty. It looked like tonight maybe his first top 10 since April of last year at Talladega. But just a few minutes ago, he pitted under the green, lost a couple of laps, then the caution came out. 
Kyle continues to be determined to be successful as a driver, also running the operation at Petty Enterprises. Also, you have to keep in mind, he's pointing toward a big race later this month in Kansas City, the home of Sprint. Kyle Petty looking to get back to victory lane, but a strong run here tonight was taken out of play by the caution flag. Alan? Yeah, Bill Kyle trapped in 26th place now. The first car, the only car, in fact, two laps down. That's too bad for him. One to go is the signal now. The caution came out for debris from Bill Elliott's car. This is Jeff Gordon's view. Watch this as pieces start flying off. And I don't know what those pieces are. I just hope that they won't puncture a tire because that's not the drama that Rusty Wallace, Ricky Rudd, those guys need worrying about debris and puncturing a tire. Johnny Benson, the first car who took fresh tires under that last caution, is in 10th place now. And we're going to get the restart with 27 laps to go. Rusty Wallace really laying back for the pace car. Look at that. Green, green, green. Remember, Rudd's got to try and get him quick. The longer they go, the better Wallace gets over Rudd. Here comes Harvick for second. Rudd's got to be careful here. Jeff Gordon is well down in the field. He's in 36th place, 117 laps down. A second place finish is going to be a good points night for the championship for Ricky Rudd. He can't take a chance on getting taken out by the rookie behind him trying to get a spot. And I don't think that Ricky Rudd realizes just how good this 29 car is right now. I think this is by far the best that Harvick has been all night long. Looking down on Richmond from our U.S. Army Sky Cam. There are 212 ways to be a soldier. Find out more at GoArmy.com. Oh, oh, oh Rusty Wallace, Wallace is down. Oh. Rusty Wallace bumped out of that high lane. Ricky Rudd goes to the lead. Here comes Harvick underneath. Ricky's got something hanging off the, looks like the rear of the car there. Wallace is back and forth. I think that's where Harvick made contact with the back bumper of the 28 car. See that hanging right there. A little piece of metal. Let's take a look at what happened that knocked Rusty Wallace out of the lead that he's held for so long. I don't think Ricky. Yeah, he got loose. I mean, Rusty got loose on his own there. Ricky did not lay a fender on Rusty on that deal. He was close enough underneath the rear of the car where it probably took a little bit of air off it. I don't know, BP, did you see any contact there while it was happening? I don't know. It was very, very close. I think, but I think you're right. I think Rusty got a little bit sideways as he got off the corner, which I think maybe allowed the 28 car to close up faster than he was going to, but whether or not there was contact or not, I couldn't tell. I think the contact that came was after Rusty was sideways. Rusty was lifted off the gas. To, to get control of his car, and if anything, Ricky nipped him there. If anything. So, the man who's led 276 laps of this race is back and forth. And now with 18 laps to go, Kevin Harvick trying to get the lead on Ricky Rudd. Tony Stewart just got punted up out of the groove a lap ago by Jeff Burton. Stewart has fallen back to ninth place. Harvick's car, where did he come from? This is by far the best his car has been all night. And he's turned Ricky Rudd sideways up. And how did Rudd save that car? That is a save right there. Man. 
Here comes Dale Jr. on run for second as Harvick takes the lead. Short track wildness has set in in the late laps in Richmond. Going to be some hot tempers after this one. Kevin Harvick looking for his third win of his rookie season. And here we have Dale Earnhardt Jr. Good, 15 to go. 15 laps to go. If he could get to the front, pick up a million dollar bonus. Tell you what, might not be enough time for Kevin Harvick to get away. How did Rudd save that car? I don't know. I don't know, but I know he wants to get back up on the bump of that <laughs> 29 car real bad. Let's go take a look at how Kevin Harvick got the lead. Off turn two. Now it happened the same. That's exactly what happened to Rusty. It looked like Ricky had already started getting loose up off of two. Watch, see if there's any contact here. Rusty gets loose. I. Boy, that's close. If any, barely. But Rusty was already very loose at that point. Rusty beginning to feel some pressure from Dale Jarrett, who's closing in on him to try and get fourth spot away. DJ sneaking up into fifth. Can Rudd get, oh, Harvick's loose off two. See, that's what I'm saying, these guys are getting real loose off of two. And what makes it work? Oh, Rudd took a run at him and he missed. <laughs> I think he took a run into the corner, deep on him and he missed. When you get loose off the corner like that, and you've got another car right underneath your bumper, he's taking the air off your spoiler, and that even makes it worse. There's Jarrett, Bobby Labonte closing in on Rusty Wallace. 11 laps to go. Now this is a little bit of drama. <laughs> Kevin Harvick started in 22nd place tonight. First laps he led all night have been the last seven. Rusty Wallace in fourth. But Ricky Rudd is not giving up. Not much lap traffic going to come into play over the final nine laps. There is one slower car ahead of the leaders, Casey Atwood. Other than that, clean racetrack. Fourth place. Dale Jarrett trying to turn around what has been a dismal five or six weeks for him. We have big points day here for the Yates team. I think that Dale Jarrett, with his, the way his night has gone, will be thrilled to death with a fourth place finish. Remember Jeff Gordon involved in a crash back at lap 35. He's 117 laps down in 36th place. Sterling Marlin, third in points, also had problems. Mechanical variety for him. He's 49 laps down in 33rd, but second and fourth in the championship. A running second and fourth in the race right now. And if they finish like this, what was a 342-point advantage for Jeff Gordon drops to 227, headed to New Hampshire next Sunday. Six to go. Rudd was quicker than la that lap than Kevin Harvick. We've seen Harvick slip. We've seen Rudd slip. We've seen Wallace it's slip. Coming, he coming. got the bumper. Here comes Rudd. <laughs> oh, man. The bump and run. Rudd goes back to the lead with five to go. He better get away from him, too. BP, I told you these guys were better at it than <laughs> most. <laughs> <laughs> he better get away from him. This is going to be a popular win if Rudd holds on. He's a native of Chesapeake, Virginia. Not an hour's drive up the road from here.
Jr. on Harvick for second. Float on the bottom, float on the bottom. Clear. Here he comes again. Still outside, three to go. Three, still outside. Dale Jr., the farthest up with the drivers eligible for the million dollar bonus. And Ricky Rudd is loving this. He's looking at that rear, rear, rear. He's going, race, boys, race. As he pulls away as they're doing it. Two laps to go for Rudd. Earnhardt Jr. gave it a try. Looks like he may have to settle for third. Unbelievable. The turn of events in the last 25, 30 laps. White flag is out. Final lap for Ricky Rudd. He inherited the lead when Rusty Wallace slipped off a two. Then Rudd's car got away. Kevin Harvick took the lead. He got back to Harvick. Used the old bump and run on him with five laps to go. And it's going to be a big night in the championship for Ricky Rudd. Checkered flag is up. Rudd wins the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 at Richmond. Is that a clenched fist being shown there? Uh, I think I think they're okay with that. Ricky Rudd pulling out a big night here in Richmond. He got the lead. He lost the lead. He got it back. with Kevin Harvey. There's the bump, up the hill he goes, underneath goes Ricky Rudd for the win. You could hear the bump too, could you, in that, the audio? Oh, he's gonna tear the grass up. Well, oh, the grass is all, they've used all the grass they need. Second Richmond win for Ricky Rudd in front of his home state fans. We'll hear from him when we come back in a minute. Welcome to the autotrader.com post race show from the Richmond International Raceway on TNT. Post race wrap ups of tonight's Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. What a terrific finish this one had. Three lead changes in the final 23 laps, and it's Ricky Rudd who comes out on top to get his second win of the 2001 season. Good points nights for Rudd and Jaron after Jeff Gordon had his troubles early. Two 17 cars will finish in the lead lap. Bill Elliott, the last, he will finish the lead lap despite the problems that he had running the back of the 93 car. Kenny Wallace in for Steve Park in the Pennzoil car, 21st place tonight. A lot of guys got overtaken in a caution that came out just after they made green flag pit stops, put them well behind. And you see Jeff Gordon going to finish 36th tonight. Got bumped by Sterling Marlin and crashed in turn three, racing for third at lap 35. 117 laps down. Ron Horner, they had a great run started tonight. Had some trouble over in turn two, crashed out of the race. Mike Wallace on the front stretch and Brett Bodine also out of the race. Dave Burns just moments ago spoke with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale, you hopped out of the car, looked very tired. You worked hard out there tonight, right? I was just uh, kind of frustrated. Got, like, we really couldn't get the car to turn in the middle, in the middle of the corners uh, to be able to keep up with the guys that were leading. Uh, it was a heck of a show. I had a great seat, in the, probably the best seat in the house. Uh, Kevin got up there and run the back of the 28, and then uh, Ricky run back by him, uh, you know, through him, really. But uh, that was, a, you know, a good race, and I'm, congratulations, Ricky. Uh, I'm sure it's not the first race Kevin's lost like that, and probably won't be the last. But uh, we needed the points, and we finished third. We'd like to win a million, but we'll go to Talladega and try again. All right, good night for him. Former, former winner here comes home third tonight. Celebration ongoing in Victory Lane, and the Looney Tunes are joining in. How did our Looney Tunes cars fare tonight? 
Well, Taz did pretty good. Everybody else kind of had a rough one. Back to Richmond, the more post-race coverage in just a minute on TNT. Back at Richmond, let's take a look at our Pepsi race recap and the highlights of the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. Lap number six, John Andretti was the first to have problems on the night, got together with Jimmy Spencer, cut left front tire. Buckshot Jones got turned around off of turn number four. First of a couple of incidents he was involved in during the night. This was the big one, though. This is the headline maker right here. Sterling Marlin nipping Jeff Gordon, racing for third at lap 35. Another look at it. Gordon going to finish in 36th place, 117 laps down. Ouch. Moving ahead to lap number 93, Sterling Marlin, third in points coming in, broke the transmission on a pit stop. Went behind the wall, lost 49 laps making repairs. He finishes in 32nd place. Elliott Sadler, one of the five drivers eligible for the million dollar bonus. If he could win tonight, that one went up in smoke against the inside wall on the back stretch. Mike Wallace gets bumped by Mark Martin. Big cloud of smoke. Somehow, about everybody makes it through okay except Wallace. Closing in on halfway. Here's the second of the incidents Buckshot was involved in. Ron Hornaday and he contact. Matt Kenseth would also be involved. Now the race getting down to its final laps. Things really got interesting. 23 to go. Rusty Wallace gets loose off a of two. Ricky Rudd goes to the lead. 17 laps to go. Kevin Harvick up into Rudd. Harvick goes into the lead. Great save by Ricky Rudd to hang on. Now five laps to go. Turn number three, Rudd. The bump and run on Kevin Harvick. Excuse me, I'm going to victory lane. And Ricky Rudd does the victory donuts, celebrating his second win of the 2001 NASCAR Winston Cup campaign and a big night in the championship for Rudd as well, winning while Gordon finished in 36th place. Top five finishers in tonight's race, eligible for the next million dollar bonus race. Comes up at Talladega, uh, October the 21st. Earnhardt Jr., uh, excuse me, this is a look at tonight's results, I'm sorry. I was thinking ahead. But that's how they made out tonight, so the million dollars stays locked in the safe. And Rudd, Harvick, Earnhardt Jr., Jarrett, and Wallace will go for the million in Talladega October the 21st. We're back to Richmond after this on TNT. Celebration kind of carried over a little bit. Over the wall, literally. Here are the championship standings after tonight's race here in Richmond. Ricky Rudd gaining 120 points on Jeff Gordon. Dale Jarrett gaining 100. And Sterling Marlin losing two spots from third down to fifth. Ten races to go in the season now for Rudd and Jarrett to try and catch Jeff Gordon for the title. And Marty Snyder has just spoken with Dale Jarrett. Well, never have I been around a fourth place finish that felt like a win. That was pretty incredible. I mean, you guys made about 15, 20 changes on that car tonight trying to get it better. They worked hard on it. Uh, we were pretty far off at the start. Uh, we tried a little something new tonight or different than what we run here in the past. We were just too loose, and uh, we made a lot of adjustments, and uh, credit goes to those guys in the pits. They worked their tails off. We gave up track position a couple of different times just so we could get the adjustments made and we could stay out there towards the end, and we got the car a lot better where we could race with them, and... Uh, Teammate Ricky won, that's great, and uh, we had a good night. So things went well for us. We're awful uh, proud of the, the effort that was put forth to get us in the top five. And a big gain in points, and they're going to run for a million at Talladega, where this guy's usually pretty good. Thoughts of Dale Jarrett as he gets set to head along with the fans out of the Richmond International Raceway. We'll have some more thoughts for you on tonight's race when we come back. Some 100,000 tonight at the Richmond International Raceway, witnessing the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes, and boy, what a finish did we all get to see. And welcome back to our autotrader.com post-race coverage. Alan Bestwick here with Wally Dallenbach and Benny Parsons. Top of our show, pre-race coverage, in fact, we documented some of the craziness in the Bush Series race last night, and people knocking each other into the wall and all the rest. We saw some bumping tonight, but of a little different variety. Wally told us early on that in the pre-race show that these guys are really good at that bump and run. They're going to do it and not put the guy out. And Wally, you were correct, my boy. We went to school tonight and we saw how to, to do it properly and to do it like you didn't really mean it. 
Let's go back and take a look at the couple of bump and runs that wound up settling this thing in the final laps. You had first Ricky Rudd leading Kevin Harvick, and that one came down with uh, off of turn number two. And what a great save by Ricky Rudd. I, again, he said in victory lane, he just was trying to figure out where he was going to hit the wall. First one was with 17 to go. This was with five to go. And there's that, oh, I didn't really mean that. I just got in there a little bit too hot. That, yeah, right. that means I was coming in there to move you out of the way is exactly. what it means. But I guess what we saw tonight, bottom line, was the skill of Winston Cup drivers, the exceptional car control, because it was a bump and run. It wasn't a, I'm going to knock you out of the way. And I think that what we saw also was a great no call by NASCAR. They saw Harvick get in the 28 car on the backstretch. And then when Rudd, and again, we all know that Rudd, intended to go up and hit the 29 car. NASCAR said nothing about it. I think that was a great call. And also, Harvick knew it was coming. Harvick knew <laughs> that he had one coming, and he, he accepted the blame for it. He said, hey, he, he did what he had to do. So that was good on Harvick's part to, uh, to accept that. So three lead changes in the final 23 laps of this one. Some using the old front bumper, but when it was all done, the veteran Ricky Rudd was in victory lane here at Richmond in the Chevy Monte Carlo 400.